Hi there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brangus Creations and thank you for joining my stream. And I was cutting that one a little on the fine side today. <coughs> I uh, literally down to the last minute there just setting up the old uh, um, OBS and whatnot. Uh, yes, slept in today. How is everyone doing? A quick hello to folks. Uh, hello, Jay. Uh, my apologies for doing this one well in advance so that you had to kill 42 minutes. Uh, hello, Michael Mullet. Hello, Distro Hopper 39B, Christopher Bourne, uh, Jeff uh, Osretrocomp. Hello, Tone, uh, Jeff Barnard, MacBoy91SI, and uh, Dana. Thank you for joining. Uh, get everyone? I think I got everyone. Um, so, um, yeah, so I've got a kind of a whole bunch of things that I need to get done today in terms of, you know, sort of work and that. And I just thought, uh, rather than just having a, a specific description of what I was doing today, I would uh, um, uh, just sort of play it by ear. Uh, the first thing I am going to be doing is having a look at this, uh, which is a Macintosh Classic analog board. Uh, this is an interesting one because the customer sent me their logic board. They said, oh, look, I'm getting a, a checkered screen. Uh, can you recap the logic board? And I said, yes, no problem. And he said, checkered screen and wobbling. Now, because he sent me the logic board and I recapped it. And I said to him, look, you know, um, it's been done and it needed doing and all that. But the symptoms you just described to me in terms of checkered board and wobbling, I suspect it's probably the analog board or, or a combination of both. Um, and so, um, uh, so anyhow, he got the logic board back, plugged it in, sure enough, still had a problem. So he's now sent me the analog board. So now I've got this analog board here. Um, I am going to recap it, or I'm certainly going to go through part of the process. I probably won't finish this one because, uh, when I'm recapping these, I like to clean them. Um, and cleaning them involves putting them in the ultrasonic cleaner and, one interesting thing about these boards is they have a speaker on them and speakers don't like being submerged in liquid. So I have to actually take the speaker off, then clean it and then put the speaker back on again. So joy, oh joy. Uh, but we will take these caps off and we'll have a look at them and chances are they're going to be stuffed. Um, we've got um, tools here to test them, to check and see what they're like. Um, but yeah, I, I expect um, essentially the ones we're looking at, just looking at the side view here, this little cluster here. They are the ones that are most likely to cause us grief. Uh, this is a 240 volt board, which is slightly different to or the 220 volt board, which is different to the uh, 110 volt board. So um, just uh, just letting you know uh, that if you have a board that looks different, for example, yours might have two capacitors here rather than just one. Now chances are you've got the 110 volt board. Uh, this can be converted into a 110 volt board. Um, so there, yeah. um, by moving some things and changing some stuff and I've never done it, but apparently it can be done. So, um, okay. So what have we got going on here? Um, hello, Bruce Wayne. Yes, that's me. Um, okay. Malto Nitho, Nitho, Nitho. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Uh, Spencer McKenneth Williams. Hello there. Um, so, yeah, this is, um, um, yeah, I've, I've got, there's obviously this that I need to look at. Then there is, I've got a Macintosh SE30. I've got a floppy drive. Uh, for anyone who was watching my live stream the other day, they will recall that it was a very unsatisfying ending because I did not fix the uh, Macintosh 2. And I still have not finished the Macintosh 2, but having said that, I haven't spent much time on it. Um, yeah, at my last live stream, for anyone who might remember, I was in a bit of a rush to finish because I had someone uh, that was uh, had some Macs, some vintage Macs or some vintage-ish Macs that they, um, they wanted to find a home for. And uh, I had said that I would come and have a look at them. And I had told him initially, I said, oh, look, I'll be around there in the afternoon. But then he started sort of nagging me, sort of saying, when are you going to be here? When are you going to be here? And it's sort of like, it was still morning. And I was like, well, it's not afternoon yet. So anyway, I got there a little after two o'clock in the afternoon. And I, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do financially because I didn't want to spend too much money on this stuff. I really didn't. Uh, the thought was that some of the things that I didn't want, I could maybe resell and recoup my costs that way. 
but I had no idea how much money I should offer him or whatever the case may be. But anyhow, this is what he had. He had a, a 500 megahertz G4 uh, dual processor uh, graphite tower. Jeez, I put all those words in the wrong order, but you've got them all there. You put them in whatever order you like. G4 tower graphite 500 megahertz dual processor. Um, so there was that. There was a Snow 600 megahertz G3 iMac. So that's, you know, bubble iMac in the snow color. There were two iBooks, two G4 iBooks. So they're the white ones. Well, again, snow. Um, there was uh, a, a white MacBook, one of those sort of polymer ones. I don't know, 2007 or something like that. I'm not sure the exact year. There was an eMac on a swivel stand. And there were two G5 iMacs. So they're the all-in-one um, screen, you know, computer behind the screen sort of set up. So they look like the later white iMacs, the Intel ones, but obviously G5. And they're 1.8 gigahertz from memory for those two. So that was however many that is, that, that, that group of computers I just mentioned. So that's, that's basically what was there. Um, and he didn't want any money for them. He just wanted them gone. So I just grabbed them all. Uh, I don't want all of them. And I mean that most sincerely. Um, but I felt bad just picking the ones that I wanted when he ultimately wanted to be rid of them. He doesn't know anyone in the sort of, you know, computer, you know, rare computer, you know, vintage computer groups. And I thought to myself, if I grab them and then I can just give away the ones that I don't want. So anyhow, um, that's, that's that it, the, uh, in terms of, I've tested them all now. Um, the, a few of them have got failing or failed hard drives. The, uh, I, one of the iBooks doesn't boot. The other one does boot, but the screen is cracked. So I'm going to turn that into one working iBook. The MacBook doesn't work at all. And I'm honestly not going to spend one second's worth of time on that because I really don't care. I've got so many of those white MacBooks and I really don't care for them at all. Um, and, um, oh, of course the G5 IMAX, of course, they're not working properly because they have terrible capacitor leakage because they were once built during the capacitor plague. And so, yeah, that's that. So, okay. Quick question to anyone out there that might be a vintage Mac person, vintage Mac collector, you know, what are people's thoughts, opinions on the G5 IMAX? I would just be interested to know what people think about the G5 iMac. Um, oh, we've got to have more people join. I'm going to say hello to these people. So, uh, uh, I think, did I already say hello? I, I've got to just check here because I'm, li yeah. Did I say hello to uh, Spencer McKenneth Williams if I didn't? Oh, yes, I did. I did. I remember that now. Um, okay. What we're fixing tonight, the new VH, we are, well, to start off with, we're going to start off with a uh, Macintosh Classic Analog Board. Uh, we're going to have to replace the caps, and we'll test these caps as we go as well. So, um, did I say hello, Madeline? Hello, Madeline. Thank you for joining the stream. Um, okay, Michael likes the G5 iMac. Uh, J, G5 iMac, a waste of space, time, money, everything. Uh, never used one myself, but looks cool. Um, yeah, so... It's interesting because I, I I did already know Jay's opinion of the G5 iMac, but if I am if I'm not mistaken, it was the first iMac to do the screen and computer all in one, as in you know rather than like the G4 iMac that had the computer in the base and then the screen on it. This was basically just the whole screen and computer all in one unit. It was the first one to do that one. That was it not? And in which case, I think it's a fairly significant you know piece of design in terms of you know apple computers there are, i can understand there might be things about that you know that computer that you may not like in terms of it being it was a g5 g5s ran incredibly hot which means that they had to essentially stop it from running particularly fast you know so uh, that uh, sort of uh you know scale them back in, in in speed and that but uh um but yeah, I mean, with the LCD and the computer in there, and of course I opened these ones up yesterday and they're beautifully laid out. When you get that back case off, 
and you've just got all these little con sort of components all in their little compartments, the like hard drives up here and the RAMs over there and motherboard here and all the little fans all pocketed around. I um, actually feel like they're actually quite a nice computer. They might have been underpowered, all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, so the iMac Trifu was, uh, was not the last of the two five towers. Yes. So oh, hang on. So I, I, I got to. I just need to read through these. Um, yes, it was the first iMac like that. Hello, Steve. Thank you for joining. Um, so yeah, I think it was a fairly significant piece of design. Now, of course, what's wrong with them? As I say, they're a bit underpowered and they do have the capacitor plague issue, but that's not really Apple's fault. Um, I, I am curious, Retro Techie, hello, Kyle GP, hello, thank you for joining. I, I, am, I am curious, and I may end up doing this as an experiment. I may end up recapping one of these G, iMac G5s and then reselling it and see if it's actually worth it. See if, the, see if I can sell the iMac G5 for the cost of recapping it. I got the computer for nothing. So it, I need to replace at least 25 electrolytic capacitors. So even if I pick up ones for like a dollar each, there's $25 worth of capacitors. There's maybe an hour's worth of recapping time. So there's going to be a cost involved. There's an investment involved there in that iMac G5. It looks in pretty good condition. Would I then be able to sell it for more than the cost of the caps and recapping it? I might do that as an interesting experiment, just see what happens, just for a little bit of fun. But I have a sneaking suspicion that I, I won't be able to. I suspect that once I recap it, I won't be able to recoup the cost of my recapping when I resell it. Even if I sell it as recapped, 100% working, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but it will be an interesting experiment. So, um, right. if they ran hot, why didn't they just chuck 50,000 fans in? Well, that's because of uh, Mr. Jobs. He liked computers to be quiet. Um, I just don't think the industrial design was there with the G5 iMac. Yeah, I mean, I know what you mean. If you if you look at, say, the first of the aluminium all-in-one screen computers, they look much nicer than the white ones. But see, even though I, I owned a white Intel one, that was a good little computer, but, you know. Um, okay, so there we go. Um, let's get started on doing some of this. So I need to, when, when, okay, so this is a Macintosh classic analog board. Yay, we're getting actually to the point here. Sorry about that, folks. Um, and as I mentioned before, they have leakage primarily around these caps here. And on the other side of the board, that's this section around here. Now, it's not uncommon with these for them to be totally blackened in this area from the capacitor leakage coming through to the other side and just uh, damaging these traces and everything like that. And that's that's a big problem because one of the things that actually can happen with these, if I zoom this in, actually, well, let's look at it under a microscope. Oh, let's drop a mouse. Uh-oh. 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 There we go. Phew. All right. So let's have a look under the microscope. Um, this is going to be difficult because this is such a high, high board. I'm going to have to lift this up. And over. Oh, there we go. And there we go. Uh, okay. Crazy Tech Reviews. Hello. We've got 23 people watching at the moment. Thank you for joining. Uh, so it is actually a public holiday here in Sydney at the moment. It's Monday and it's a public holiday for something. Labor Day or something. I don't know. I've got no idea. Um, and... Um, so in the US, I believe it is Sunday. So hello to... Sunday people. Right. Now, let's just see. Yeah, this, um, oh, oh look at that focus. Or lack thereof. Let's do that. There we go. Okay, so what can sometimes happen with these? When you end up with that uh, leakage getting onto this side of the board, um, what can end up happening is these 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 bits of copper around here will corrode and there's a, a little dip just around these edges so where that's where a pin is coming through and there there is an ex, a pad there with coat with the uv coating on the on the actual copper around the outside now what happens is where this where this pad is you know sort of like the exposed metal part i probably should just, let's wick some uh, solder away so i can show this a little bit easier 
Still recharging from my six hours dream. Yes, I know. And you started that way too early for me to watch too, I'm afraid. So, um, it's daylight savings here now. And it's not that it, it is daylight savings still there as well. And, uh, so I'm actually, I'm the overlap between our, uh, our hours is, is actually a little bit longer at the moment. Um, so whereas normally this would be 11.46, it's now 12.46. Right, so, all right, here we have, I'm just going to clean this up a smidge. Where's my toothbrush? Yeah. I use toothbrush for cleaning, and as I've mentioned before, this is not the toothbrush I use for cleaning my teeth. Right. So, here we have our little circle of you know tinned copper you know exposed copper that's got solder on it now what can happen with these when they get a lot of gunk on them they can actually corrode around the edges of that ring and what you can end up with you can end up with a situation where it, it looks like everything's fine but this part of the copper has actually broken away from this part of the copper and so it's not making contact in which case what i do with those instances i come around here and i scrape some of this this away and then I just build some solder that goes across and builds a join between those two. But that does happen. So just, uh, yeah. Um, all right. So we've got to get these, um, we've got to get these caps off. Um, I have, I do have an issue, a fairly significant issue with my solder suckery machine. You know, the one that sucks solder out. Uh, it's not heating properly. Um, so I'm glad I didn't give this too much of a favorable review early on. I might have to look at buying a new, uh, heating element but we'll just see if this actually works for me this isn't necessarily how I would always take these off um, 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 um. daylight savings chuck the changeover sucks balls <laughs> I personally would just like it to be daylight savings all the time but I don't live on a farm it's, it's my understanding that uh, that it, it has a fairly significant impact to people living on a farm in terms of them having to get up in the dark um, <clears throat> Send me a highlight reel, please do, Steve. Um, I'm not sure I will get six hours to sit there and watch the whole thing. So, um, but good on you for doing it. Um, all right, so let's just see if I can get some of these out. I'm just going to move this and we'll change camera angles and I'll just see if I can. There we go. Let's go to this one. Let's see if I can get some of this out. Let's have a look, see. Melting. See, it's just not getting hot enough. It's not melting. The sucking side of it's fine, but it's just not melting. Is this the iMac G5? No. This is a classic analog board. I don't even know if I've actually got the caps in stock for doing the iMac G5. I do want to do it though. I'd like to get it up and running. Um, uh, cause despite what everyone's sort of been saying, I do actually quite like the iMac G5. Don't ask me why. See, it's just not getting hot and I can get my soldering iron here and I can apply some extra heat here. Still doesn't work. So yeah, um, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to do something about this, about the old uh, solder sucker, because he's just not, uh, he's not playing along at the moment. Um, I pr look, the truth is, I'm probably just going to buy a whole new one of these, this whole handle unit, which you can then just remove. And the reason being that, first of all, my little metal thing here is broken and held together with JB Weld. Um, the other is that I'm nearly out of the little... Um, filtery things and I haven't been able to find a place that just sells the filters on their own so I'll probably just buy that whole handle unit and I'll just keep that one for spare bits okay all right well we've got questions going on here yes the old um machine it's just it's very disappointing yes sorry I missed what we were working on sorry I was not I was I did not come across I, I know I came across sounding full of contempt but that was not actually the way I felt so, um, yes, yes, we are working on a Macintosh Classic, classic Analog board here, um, and uh, 
Uh, it's this is uh, as I, I sort of mentioned earlier on in the stream. But for anyone who's just joined in um, uh, and would like a little a little recap, <laughs> um, they sent me the logic board. I recapped it, and the problems they had still existed. So I said, "Look, this, this, based on what you're telling me, this sounds like the analog board needs recapping." Um, so let's just have a quick look. I've just pulled out a capacitor here, just cause, and we can see leakage on there. You can see all that gunge and yuck and so this is leaking so let's test this one shall we just for a little bit of fun why not why not indeed let's get our what is it what's the number of this component tester again was it cm328 or something or c something 328 it's a little component tester i bought this as a kit uh interestingly enough um uh who did a review of this recently um someone did a review of a video review of this just recently I don't want to say the wrong person. Um, David Stahl. That's right. Okay. So, um, if we say his name twice, will he arrive at the stream? David Stahl. David Stahl. David Stahl. No. Um, so, uh, he did a review of this. And what I found really interesting... Um, was that his the container that he had sort of went narrow at the end here and i also heard someone saying that these cases are really hard to put together and this one wasn't so i don't know and the other thing he was saying was something about when this lever goes down having there not being enough clearance there or something like that that's certainly not the case with this one this one's fine so and i've got great big humongous fingers so um so who knows anyhow this case here i can I can endorse it. There we go. I can say it's a good case. All right. Oh, hang on. I haven't put the component in. Calm down. So I'm just going to put this component into the old component tester. Close the little thingy to hold it, to hold it in position. And then we shall press the button and do a check. And it's saying testing. It's identified it's a capacitor. And it is saying it is... 932 microfarads with 0.07 um, ESR. So that's this 1,000 microfarads. So this one is still reasonably within range. Even though we've got leakage there, this one is probably still functioning okay. So there we go. I'm sure we'll find some that won't be though. All right, can I just get rid of these? Okay. Back to the... Now, I've got to remove these, and I've just got to only remove the capacitors and nothing else. And can I detect from this side of the board which ones are capacitors and which ones aren't? I know that that one is. Whoopsie, focus. Focus. <laughs> I think I might need to uh, repaste this little... Uh, uh, Mac Pro I've got down here because it is fans are cranking So I'm just using wick to get rid of the solder from here um, I could use my solder sucker with this one. I generally don't use a solder sucker when I've got a uh, a, uh, a device that is um, Heavily corroded because it can end up sucking pads up and stuff like that, which we don't want um, But I can use my solder sucker also known as the brucinator Uh, that looks like a cap there as well. E. E. Down. Out. Go. Thank you. That looks like a cap there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, focus. This is going to go out of focus as I go because it's, I'm going at an angle. So on you want, it is beautiful weather here at the moment. Absolutely want a little bit of a breeze out there, but it is whoa, 31 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. And it is just lovely, and there is a pungent smell coming off this board. So there you go. Wonder what those solder stripes on the PCB were for, possibly increasing current. I've wondered that myself. 
I don't have an answer, I'm afraid, so... But I have indeed wondered that. Um, if anyone knows the answer, I'd be interested. Okay. Do -do -do. 88 Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Fahrenheit is not nice weather. Well, it is for me. I do like the warm. This is this is just delicious weather for me. Uh, and then I've got a couple down here, which I think. Oh man, see one of these isn't a capacitor. Well, that one is. Okay, that one and that one. That one and that one. Yeah. Okay. So we want to do this one. Oh, there's a bit of spit. Do this one and this one. Generally, don't replace every capacitor on these because they're not all a problem. But uh, I often just have a look and see. Okay, let's have a look. There's one. There's come on, let's come. Two. Now this board hasn't been uh, fired up in a long time, so I don't need to worry about any capacitors potentially holding a charge. Uh, the ones that you, you always look out for are the, the high voltage ones. So this one here, for instance, that's a 400 volt. If I had this up and running and then I took this board out and then I went up here and touched my finger across these two pins, I am likely to give myself a very nasty burn. And it's likely to make a big noise and make me squeal. Um, the other issue I have with this is I can't remember exactly if I have all of these capacitors. <laughs> um, so I could actually be ripping all these caps off and then I, I don't have replacements for them. So that'll just be something to look forward to. All right, I'm going to take probably these three off and that one off. Now, I use an ultrasonic cleaner, as I have mentioned many times before. One of the things that ultrasonic cleaners do is, uh, I don't know if it's the actual uh, uh, ultrasonic cleaning, I have to do a test one day, if it's the ultrasonic cleaning or if it is the, uh, um, uh, or if it's the cleaning detergent, but it does terrible things to exposed aluminium. It just makes them look awful. So, um, one of the things that I will often do when I'm working on these is I'll take all the caps off and then I will clean it and then put the caps on so that I don't basically what happens is this end bit here that aluminium end bit there that goes black it doesn't do any harm to the capacitor it just doesn't look very nice it's like hey did you put new capacitors on this or what what's going on man hey man oh dear oh dear oh dear oh bugger too far up now. It's going to be out of focus, guys. Sorry. Won't be for long. Yep. Yep. Ah, good evening from Canada. Hello, Andrew. Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, just a quick little recap of what we're doing here. Recap of the recap. I, ca I can't help making that joke even when I don't mean to. Um... The, um, yeah, so this is a Macintosh Classic analog board. It's been sent to me by a customer. Um, they uh, sent me their logic board first. I recapped it. Its computer still didn't work, so they then sent me the analog board. Uh, and I am fairly sure that the problem is, is with the analog board anyway. Oh, it just fell out. How oh, cool. Is with the analog board anyway because of the symptoms he described, which was a checkerboard screen that wobbles. Now, I could be completely wrong about this, so if I'm about to say the wrong thing, um, let me know. But a checkerboard screen, generally on these old classics, is an indication that the logic board is not getting enough volts. 
So uh, that's that's generally the issue. Um, okay, I'm going to take this one off. Incidentally, I think I do have a recapping guide for this, but once again, it is a recapping guide for a um, for the 220 volt one, and I think the caps are different on the 110 volt one. But I've never had a 110 volt one to do a cap recap guide for. So sorry. Feel like sending me a 110 one? Do so. Suck. Eh. Yeah, that's not. Oh yeah. There we go. That one. I think there's maybe two more caps I'm going to remove from this one. Uh, the rest, uh, the rest I'm just going to keep. Original, three more. I'll take three off, and the rest I'm just going to stick with the originals. Uh, 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 uh. I have a, a fairly interesting thing that often happens when people send me stuff for recapping. Let's just say someone sends me, I don't know, for argument's sake, a Macintosh 2 CI. Um, and they send me the whole computer and they say, uh, can you recap the logic board? Only do the power supply if it needs doing. And then you're kind of like, well, your computer's like 30 years old. It needs doing. Um, it might work for another five years. It might work for another 10. But at the end of the day, if it's that age, it's really going to need doing. So what can you do? I can test the caps, get the old ESR meter on it and see if uh, they're reading within range. If they're all okay, I can come back and say, oh, look, that's probably fine. But, you know, when someone actually says, you know, does it need doing, you sort of, you do just feel like saying, this is a really old piece of hardware. It needs doing, even if it's working. But at the same time, I do need to try and make sure that people aren't spending too much money on these old things. Um... Some people come to me and they just say, do everything. Do the works. I don't care what it costs. Do everything. I want the whole thing fixed up. I want it ready to last for another 20 years or whatever the case may be. Um, and with those ones, I'll just give it the works. Um, other people, of course, are on a bit of a budget. Okay, this is the last one. Out she comes. Oh, thank you, uh, Jay, for doing the little bit of uh, advertising there. Jay is good value. All right, so that I've taken off all the caps that I'm going to replace on this one. Uh, these are all the, the you know generally problematic ones. All these other kind of little tiny ones aren't usually an issue, nor is the great big 400 volt one. So uh, I'm just going to put this board aside. This is now going to get cleaned. I am going to clean it before I put the new caps on, which all as I said might seem a little bit confusing, but it is it is just because of the, the what happens to aluminium, uh, aluminium when I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, it, it, it's actually interesting to watch, and I don't. It, it, I guess it's something to do with the properties of um, aluminium. When you put a piece of aluminium in the ultrasonic cleaner, it reacts r quite differently to other things. So. I don't know if it's something to do with the surface or whatever the case is, but yeah, it's it, there is something about the properties. I probably need to read about that and be all scientific. Um, okay, now, I should probably check this for cracked solder joints, shouldn't I? Um, all right, um, David, look, he did come. See, David, I was just before I, I tried to summon you. Hello, David, thank you for joining. Pardon me. Um, we were talking about... Uh, we were talking about this and the fact that you did a review on this quite recently. And I was just commenting on the fact that your case looks very different to mine. My case is completely straight across the bottom, whereas yours has an, at an angle. And you were mentioning that there was an issue with the uh, clearance for this thing here going up and down. And I don't have that issue on mine at all. There's plenty of room there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's interesting. And, and um, I... I I, I was surprised by that one with the angled case, but, you know, there you go. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, now I can't remember, I don't think I, I saw your whole your whole video, my apologies, David, I, my, I've got a tension span like a child, 
I uh, probably got part way through it and then uh, something else, you know, it's like, oh, look, there's a butterfly. Um, you, uh, are, you, are you aware that these three... Oh, where's my Zoom? Where's my Zoom? Who took my Zoom? Here it is. Uh, are you aware that these three pads here are for testing surface mount components? So you can just push your surface mount component down on these and then test them and it'll read through those. So you've got essentially like pad one, two, and three, and they are just the same as one, two, and three along here. So um, I just mentioned that because that's something that I, I only discovered well after I'd been using this for a long time. So um, uh, so yeah, those, those little flat pieces of metal there are for testing surface mount. So there you go. Okay, moving right along. Uh, he was aware. There you go. So that's good. He probably mentioned it in the video, and I probably missed that bit. So my apologies. Um, all right. So let's have a look for cracked solder joints on these. It is a common problem with these analog boards that they do get cracked solder joints. And I can actually see one here. It's not one that's going to impact on the functionality of it, but we'll fix it anyway. So, um, so anyhow, folks, do check that out. If you want to jump onto David Stiles' channel and have a look at that review that he did, Review of that component tester. I have obviously said good, thi ugh, good things about them before on my live stream. Um, okay, you can see this here. That that is completely, completely. So we're going to fix that down there. Now the reason why I say it's not functional is because that is this is just structural. That's just holding this piece of metal onto the analog board. It's not actually going to cause a problem with it. Probably not anyway. I mean, it, it is a ground, I suppose. That might cause an issue, but anyhow, we'll fix it. We'll fix it because that's what we do. We're like Bob the Builder. There we go. But generally, when you're working with cracked solder joints, take the old solder away, put new solder on. Don't just add to the old solder. Do a proper job. Um, or do you have any advice for clearing the holes on multi-layer boards with a hand pump? I generally don't clear the holes in the board use, with a hand pump. I generally clear the holes in the board with a wick. Um, I, quite a lot of my videos will actually show that process um, because I have to do it all the freaking time. Um, but um, it really does depend on... I mean, if you've got a lot of holes to clear because... If you've got heaps of them, uh, it, you know, it... it, it it, it might wick may not be the best way to do it, but um, and surface can suffer pitting and all sorts of cleaning systems. Oh, look at this! Jay's doing the research for me. Uh, aluminium is a softer metal, and surface can suffer pitting in ultrasonic cleaning systems. At the same time, aluminium reacts with both acidic and base cleaners, so a neutral cleaning solution is required for the ultrasonic bath. There you go. There you go. No, you didn't mention. Oh, that's good. Okay, cool. Uh, looks like you may need another cleaning liquid for aluminium applications. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, uh, Madeline's obviously asked a question. Reviews. My classics don't have a switching power supply. Uh, yeah, classics don't have a switching power supply. Uh, you have to actually do a few jumpers and replace a couple of parts. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, basically, essentially what um, Crazy Tech Reviews has said there, um, uh, the classic analog board can be can have the voltage altered by changing things around. Uh, or is it one of them can and one of them can't? I think there are two different versions of the board, and one of them is quite easy to change and the other one is not. I just want to make sure the both parts of this are hot. Ouchie. Ouchie. Um, one of the things that I've always, I have mentioned this before on my live streams is uh, how annoyed I get that Apple basically started with, uh, they, they had the Mac Plus and Mac 128K, 512K, Mac Plus. It had this power supply. It had to have two different versions, the analog board, one for 110, one for two. 240. Then they brought out the SE and the SE30 with this beautiful little switching power supply inside it. And then they went back to the classic. Cost saving. Um, that didn't have a proper switching power supply. Had one that could be modified. But, yeah. 
on your apple. Okay, just fixing that one up. It's really common on these classic analog boards for these pins to come away. Because as I say, they are they are the part that's holding this metal bit onto the analog board. And, you know, if the board gets moved around or whatever, they, uh, they tend to crack. So it's really common. Uh, okay. Just checking, just checking, just checking, just checking. Dawn dish washing soap. I don't think we have Dawn here in Australia. Um, I've got some great tips coming out for ultrasonic cleaning in my ultrasonic cleaning video, which I uh, am working on at the moment. I'm probably going to do some work on that later today. Um, so, uh, yeah, some, some really good tips for uh, cleaning different things. I think my ultrasonic cleaning video is going to cause a bit of a ruckus because I have already had conversations with a few people on some of the groups that have very, very strong opinions on ultrasonic cleaning. And I suspect that some of the stuff that I'm going to say in mine is going to upset some folks. But we'll uh, look forward to that when it comes. Right, so that's those four. Um, just if I zoom out here very quickly. Uh, so what I was referring to was this piece of metal here. And it's attached onto the analog board with those like four little uh, pins in there, which I have just replaced the solder on. Now, the other places we would look for cracked solder joints are anywhere where there is a connector. And on this one, everything's soldered in. So there's only like one connector on here. What on earth is that? Oh, okay. Like this. Why not just add solder to a crack joint? Um, well, the sometimes there can be sort of... I just think you get better adhesion. I just think you get better adhesion by just taking the old solder away and putting new solder on, using the new flux and all that sort of stuff. So, um, and then of course the other thing is that sometimes you can, sometimes joints, solder joints can be bad even without looking bad. And so uh, you, if you take the solder away and redo it, you know, you've, uh, you've got a better chance of, uh, of making sure that it's going to be a good joint. So here is where I would be typically looking for cracking. I don't see any here, which is great. This is the uh, connector to the yoke. This is the yoke connector. And it doesn't look too bad. It's okay. So, yep. I'm not going to bother with that. And then the other place, of course, would be the old flyback transformer. This being a fairly large component hanging off the board, be looking out for cracks around there. But these don't look too cracky at all. So... Everybody's happy. Right. Now, here's the next thing we need to do. Oopsie, that's the wrong keyboard. This one's going to be a fun one. Sorry about banging the microphone there. Um, I'm actually using two microphones. I've got this one here and this one here. This one captures, I guess, the majority of the sound, but this one is here in case I get up and walk away or turn my head around or something like that. Um, right. So, as I mentioned before, I want to put this in an ultrasonic cleaner. And... Speakers don't like ultrasonic cleaners, so I have got to get that speaker off. Uh, not redoing the yoke solder for longevity reasons. Oh, all right. Jeez, Jay. Yep. Goodness me. Far out. Um, um, I've lost it now. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay, okay. Calling me out all the time. Making sure I do a good job. Okay, so let's remove the solder from this one. Whoop. And let's remove the solder from this one. Oh, how about I reprime this? Whoop. Right, I do it two at a time because I don't want the connector to fall out. Ouch. There we 
Okay. <laughs> Scarlet Swordfish, hello. Thank you for joining. Dana Siberia is here. Hello there. How are you? Uh, one of the flyback ones looked like it had small crack, but could be a reflection. It was on the left side of the video when you showed it. Okay, I will go back and have a look. Okay, so I'm going to add some solder to this one. And then, whoop, I like the little knob on the end. I always solder these, so I get the little knob on the end. Center. Solder, 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 solder. Nope. Okay. Oopsie. <laughs> yes, I imagine it's fairly warm at Bathurst at the moment. It is uh, certainly warm here in Sydney. Do, 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 do. Okay, there we go. All done. Let's have a look at this. See if we can identify any cracks here. I think I, I think I see what you're referring to, Dana, and I think that is just a reflection. Um, you know, the, this kind of reflection around this line here does create the illusion like it's a crack there. Now, the reason why I can tell it's not a crack is that I'm actually seeing this through two eyes and, I, and they look different, so I can actually see depth perception through there, which helps me see that that is actually a reflection. Um, but I can see why you would think that. But yeah, they're not cracked. The, the, the truth is the uh, flyback transformer on the Classic is much smaller than the ones on the Plus. And the air, um, yeah, well, the plus mainly, the 128K and 512K. And for that reason, uh, there's probably not as much weight hanging on there, pushing down. Eight degrees Celsius right now. No, no, that's awful. Ugh. Too cold. All right. All right. Uh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Oopsie. At the bottom. At the bottom. At the bottom. I definitely looked at them all. There's no crack there. There's no crack there, I promise. So, uh, time to get rid of the speaker. Uh, that's always fun. Um, we need to break out the big tools for that. Back in a second. I'm not going far, just over here. I am woman, hear me roar. Okay. Righty, 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 righty. So, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a four millimeter, I think. That's the whole size. Yep. Four millimeter drill bit. Get the old drill out. Hey. Calm yourself. on my 2SI recently, and recently uh, I really should get around to recapping it one of these days. I would highly recommend that. Indeed. Come on. There we go. Uh, excuse me, Drill. I'm going to just put you here. Because I can't be bothered getting up again. There we go. Off comes the speaker. Let's pull the rivet out. 
Ja, ja. Yeah. There we go. And we just need to desolder these wires. Uh, gotta clean this thing out. There we go. All right, there's a speaker off. So now I can drop this into the Ultrasonic Cleaner without fear of damaging this speaker. Having said that, I haven't tested this speaker. The speaker might be shot anyway. So they do go. All right, so there's the board. I'm going to put him aside. We're going to clean him, then dry him, and then uh, and obviously I'm not going to be doing that in this live stream. So that's as far as we're going to go pretty much on this. I guess the one thing we can look at here is... Hey, hey, thank you. Leakage. If there's any ever any doubt about whether these capacitors and these things leak, there is your evidence. Yes, sir. And uh, so there. Put that there. there we go. Let's move this out of the way. So we'll get that, put that to one side. We'll put that in the uh, cleaning pile, which is all taken up. So let's put that there, shall we? There we go. Nice spot. Quickly going to just test this speaker to make sure that it's all working. Um, these speakers do go. I remember someone once saying to me, oh, you know, the speakers never go on these things. Well, they do. They probably didn't for a long time, but now they're getting to the age that they do. Uh, the ones on the Macintosh 128K, 512K, Mac Plus, Classic, Classic 2. They use these ones here. It's a 63 ohm, which is really weird size. And the way you test the speaker to see if, it, if it's working, it's really simple. Get your multimeter, put it under resistance measure between these two points. I have to zoom out, don't I? Yeah. Measure between these two. There to there. And I am getting 62.5 ohms. This is a 63 ohm uh, speaker, so we're very, very close to 63. So this one uh, it seems to be fine. The speaker is fine. I don't see an issue with this one, so that's great, which is good because these are very hard to replace. Um, if you uh, measure that and it's just open, um, you know that speaker's shot. So um, I better get a little baggie for this uh, this board. Um, I haven't even opened up my uh, repair tracking stuff here. Jobs, few jobs. Um, geez, I hope I entered this in. Uh, oh yeah, I, it looks like I, ha I like I have. That is an analog board. Yep, that's it. So let's move that to in progress, and this is job number seventy. So I put seventy on the little baggie, and I put the speaker in the baggie, and we put it with my special filing system there. Alright, let's just check here. We've got a lot of discussion about temperature. 37 people watching at the moment. Thank you to all those people who are watching at the moment. If you haven't jumped onto the chat and said hello, please do so. Uh, Bill G, hello. Um, evening folks and ouch. Are you ouching the fact that I was drilling a hole in that board? That's understandable. That's a little bit frightening to start off with, isn't it? Um, it's your method of reattaching the speaker. I use um, rivets, pop rivets. So the same way that they were actually put on in the first place. So I've just got, uh, uh, I haven't got the right ones here, but I'll just show you these things. So just use a rivet, rivet gun, a rivet, uh, rivets, sorry, rivets, rivet gun thingy. Now, these aren't the ones I use. This size is way wrong. These are huge. The ones that I've got there, they're in the pile, but they're further back and I can't be bothered rifling through to find them. So, yeah, let's, I put them back on. And to be honest, once it's back on, you would have absolutely no idea that it's ever been taken off. Um, um, so there. Right, pants are falling down. Great. Okie dokie. Ooh, sorry. Bumping the uh, microphone here, probably making terrible noises. Uh, right, 
Um, right, so let's have a look at some of these capacitors that I pulled off because we did obviously identify some leakage there. So let's have a look and see how some of them look. Um, okay, well, that one is definitely leaking. Um, that one's not. That one's not. That one's not. No, this one. That one's definitely been leaking. Um, that one doesn't look too crash hot, does it? Ooh, that one's nasty too. Yeesh. These ones here with that little flat bottom on it, they're the real problem, aren't they? Some leakage in there. So let's see if we can find any of these. We'll just whack them. We're going to whack these three on the tester and just see if if they're like any of them are, are significantly out of spec. Uh, they, these may well still be functioning okay. I mean, uh, the problem could well be caused just by the, the electrolyte on the board. Um, but we'll just get the old tester out and we'll do some tester uni. I tuned in to see you drilling into that board. <laughs> um, Hot Rod, hello, welcome to the stream. Um, it worked, but it works when I put uh, isopropyl alcohol on a swab and drip down into the switch. But the next day, the problem. Do I? Um, I'll tell you what I do with switches that are a problem like that. I pull them apart. I take them off the board. I pull them apart and I clean all of the contacts inside the switch. But that's you've got to be really careful with that because when you do that. Um, well, first of all, when you dismantle them, often springs come flying out at a million miles an hour and then they get, they get lost forever. Um, but it, it basically just means that the, the little pieces of copper inside that switch that are making, um, you know, making contact and, you know, breaking apart, uh, the chances are they're just really, um, really corroded, covered in gunk, stuff like that. So, um... Yeah, I mean, you could try, um, but as I say, what I would typically do is I'd dismantle the switch, clean all the contacts and put it back together again. Um, right, so let's see if this, I don't know if these pins fit in here. They don't, they don't, the pins are too short. Oh, we can use the old multi meter. Let's have a look. Come on. Come on. Measure. Come on, you. Oh, there we nearly nearly got a reading. Two four six seven microfarad. Twenty two hundred, so it's a little bit over. Uh, it was these two I was going to do, wasn't it? Was it this one? Yeah, yeah, this one. Okay, it's this one here. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Two, six, four, seven. It's another 2200. And I was going to do one more, wasn't I? This one. I think I was this one. Four ninety four eighty four eighty five four eighty five microfarad. This one is four seventy. So these aren't massively outside of range, but you know uh, they're still not what I, exactly what I call good. This one doesn't look too crash hot. There's a thousand. Is this one I tested before? I think. Do, do, do. one 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 three. So. Yeah, again, they're still reasonably within spec, but of course, they're leaking. They've got to be replaced, so. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, okay, so that's that. That's it for the analog board of the Classic. What are we going to move on to now? The next thing I'm going to do is probably just have a look at this floppy drive. It won't take a moment. This is just a quick one. So this is just one of the little jobs I needed to do. Um, I asked the customer if they wanted this to, to have a full service, and they said, oh, I only do it if it needs it. What constitutes needing it? I don't know. Um, it doesn't look too bad. It's fairly clean. There's a little bit of dust. I'm not sure I'll give this the full works. The, there's some grease on here that's gone hard. 
can sort of, I can just sort of move that with my nail there. Um, have I got a floppy disk here? Uh, I'm just gonna see it, the mechanism seems to pull quite well. I don't know. Let's, um, let's drop this down and we'll eject it and we'll see if it ejects okay. Come on. Down. There we go. Right. So, this is a um, high density floppy drive. Um, now, the reason why I know it's high density is because it has uh, sort of three switches along here. It's a bit dark, isn't it? So if we can brighten this up a bit. Oh. Uh. There we go. Brighter. Right, so. It's the irreversible corrosion that can occur. Yes, indeed. Um, so, yes, I mean, they have to be replaced. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that because these things are uh, testing, you know, sort of within their range that uh, I'm going to put them back on. That's for sure. Um, so, um, this, yeah, okay. Well, I've got some, I've got some scungy grease on here. Out of the way, microphone. Um, okay, let's connect up some power, shall we? I'm going to set my little rubbishy bench supply here. I do have a half decent one, but this one's not. This one's rubbish. It'll do. I want 12 volts. It's going to give it to me. 12, 12. There we go. 12 volts. 12 volts. Where's the fun? Come on. Hey, there we go. <coughs> All right. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to sort of force this to eject and just see that it does eject. Okay. It'd be a lot better if I had a disc in it, but never mind. So I'm just going to do this. Seems all right. Didn't have any uh, issues opening up there. So it's all good. Um, so I think I could fairly say, I do have a, hey, here's a floppy disk. Come on. So what I might do with this one, I might just um, I might just um, this doesn't go down because I haven't got this back in its own position yet. There we go. Um, I might just clean the heads, replace the eject mechanism in this. Um, you know, so. Uh, I catch red, double the red aggressors. What does that mean? Okay, you can start. Yeah, so it's still low. They, that red, of pulled caps that red, double their rated capacitance. What does that indicate? Probably time to change them. Um, right. Um, I mean, most of those capacitors are they're designed with what is a 10 or 20% um, accuracy on them. So if you're outside of that, they definitely need replacing. So anyhow, there's a dis disc in there. We're going to eject it, or ho hopefully eject it. Yeah, that ejected. So at the end of the day, uh, that's kind of good. I mean, um, if it was my drive, I would completely and totally give it the works. But at the end of the day, if someone has actually said to me, I only do it if it needs it, it leaves me in a bit of a predicament because I need to charge them for it. So... Um, I don't know. I'll just I'll I'll clean the heads and I'll change the eject cog. So that, that's all I'll do. Um, how do you clean the heads? Uh, I use a uh, cotton bud or Q-tip or cotton tip or whatever you want to call it, uh, and some isopropyl alcohol. And I basically just look at this through the microscope and I clean the heads. So um, I'm going to just take first of all the thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take this carriage off. Yeah, I've got to get this back into position. Did I go too far? Okay, let's just wait till I get this down. 
There we go. There we go. That's down. So I'm going to take this whole carriagey bit off the top, uh, and that's pretty easy. You just got to undo these springs here. If anyone wants details on how to do this, I've got a whole video on this. So if I rush through this and you're like, oh man, I can't follow what you're doing there, watch the vid. Uh, sorry, I forgot to take this off. That needs to come off. And then that comes off. That like that. That's nice and smooth. It's good. I like it. Um, so this is generally how I clean the heads. I'm just going to put it onto microscope. This is going to look a little bit weird because we're staring out into space. It's going to be low frame rate and everything. I'm going to get my uh, patch gun. Here we go. Yeah. Can you see anything? Oh, there we go. There we go. There are the heads. I'll lift that up. Get me some. That's a, a cotton bud or a Q-tip that's been doused in isopropyl alcohol. Well, I'm just going to give that a bit of a rub under there. Squeaky clean. Everyone satisfied with that? Where do you get eject cogs? There are a number of places and you will actually find on the video that I've got on this, I put a couple of links in there. But first of all, the um, the... 3D file is available. So if you've got a 3D printer, you can probably print your own if it's accurate enough. Um, there is a, I can tell you where not to get them. Um, there is a, an online shop here in Australia that makes these green ones. Not sure if I should mention their name or not. I probably should because they've, uh, uh, they've blocked me from buying anything from in the future. So I should probably mention their name just out of spite. But, um, uh, these ones here, I've had nothing but problems with them. I ordered a whole stack of them, as you can see, a big bunch of them. And I would say probably 80% of what they sent me uh, won't even spin when it's in there. They won't even turn. It just locks up on the cogs. So no good that. Uh, I've been buying these from uh, an Australian guy. Um, these are really good. These ones are actually 3D printed overseas. Um, this guy, he basically got them to print a whole bunch of them and I must get back to him and find out when his next stock's coming in because I am running low. Um, and uh, so, but he's an Australian seller. I think he will be selling overseas eventually, but I need to double check and see if he's got his stock because he was waiting for some stock to come in before he started selling it. So assuming he's got that, I think he does sell overseas and the price is quite reasonable on these. Then there's another one. Um, uh, there's, and that's, I have links to that in my um, uh, floppy drive servicing video. So you'll find that in the features video, featured videos on my channel. And uh, and then, yeah, so, um, and there's a link to where you can buy some of these. Um, I think you buy them in either one each or three at a time. Uh, and they seem to be made quite well. One of the reasons why this cog goes, so uh, in answer to your question, Lord, having one 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 um the um what i'm fixing now is a um 1.4 megabyte floppy drive sony floppy drive from a, a macintosh se30 um now i'm going to just take this excuse me i'm going to take this eject mechanism off um once again there's lots of information on how to do this in my video on servicing a uh, uh a floppy drive <coughs> So don't worry if things just move too fast in this one and you want to do this, you go back and you watch the video and I have all sorts of close-ups and explanations and everything. So this is going to come off. I said it's going to come off. I said... Thing. Where's my tweezers? This plug sometimes, sometimes gets a little bit iffy. Uh, and if you use tweezers, it makes life a lot easier if you can find tweezers. Because I've only got like... Five pairs of the darn things. There we go. Just gonna work that out. There we go. Off she comes. There's the eject mechanism. So this one still ejects, but this is preventative maintenance that I'm basically doing on this one because I do know that these eject mechanisms do fail and will fail. And to some extent, the reason they fail is quite deliberate. And I kind of I really discovered this when I got hold of one of these motors that had jammed. So I'm going to lift that off there. If you have a look, we're going to zoom in here. Here we go. This is the mechanism here. Uh, you basically have we've got this little cog here. We're going to take him off. 
and then you've got the motor there that's a little cog of a motor there and it turns this wheel here and this wheel in turn turns that wheel that i just took off and which turns this wheel which then turns this wheel Whee, there we go and that little uh what do you call that a cam sticking out from there that actually is what um drags the uh thing forward to uh or thing backward to eject the disc okay so that's a, just a quick little explanation now you will notice of course that this jet cog here is a completely different color to the other cogs and you think why and there's a very specific reason and that is that this was designed as a fail safe if something jams the floppy drive if something the floppy drive jams on its way out or something like that and this motor is just left pushing um it will burn out the motor and I've seen it. I've actually seen one of these with a burned out motor and the top of this was just melted through and the, it was stuffed. Uh, that that motor, motor was gone. You know, forget about it, no repair. You have to replace the motor. What this is designed to do is if it jams, this cog is a weak point. It's made out of softer plastic and it is designed so that if this jams, it will actually cause this cog to break and that allows this motor to then free spin rather than getting stuck, you know, jammed in a single position and, 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 uh, and melt. Now, the problem is that because this was made of a different type of plastic that is designed to be softer, now that a bit of time has gone by and a bit of oxidization, and now, of course, this has gone yellow, uh, these get really soft. I call these the cheese cog because they become like a hard cheese. Um, so we then replace them with... A nice cog like that, a nice little uh, 3D printed replacement. Before I do that, I'm going to give it a bit of a clean inside, get my isopropyl alcohol and get some of that old grease off. Grease. Let me have a look at this. Um, da, 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 da. There we go. Uh, uh, 41 viewers, 90, 26 likes. Smash that like button. Um, are the this Jay? You know that is a really, really good question, and that to me is uh, potentially going to be a problem that we will all face in the future, because I don't know that they are being made of softer plastics. I think, I think the people that are making replacement cogs are more focused on making sure that their one lasts a really long time. Uh, so they're building them out of, you know, stronger filament, you know, so that, uh, so that they'll be a, a good, strong replacement. I, I know someone was talking about, oh, this one's good for a thousand ejects or something like that, or a thousand ejects and it's still working or something along those lines. And that is a danger. That is a real danger. And I don't know, I'm not the one making these cogs, so I don't know. Um, but I, it does worry me, um, because yeah, we could basically be setting ourselves up for, a future of burned out motors using these uh, cogs. But I, I just, I don't know. Is it safe to drink isopropanol? Um, define safe. Uh, okay. Let's get some grease, shall we? I always keep some grease on standby. Um, I know I've got an open tube of this already, but I can't find it, so I'm going to grab my unopened one. Any nice, good quality grease is fine for this. You know, one that's designed to last a long time. You know, silicon greases and stuff like that. There's plenty out there. Generally, if you're spending a decent amount of money on the grease, it'll be fine. Don't use engine grease. Don't use stuff for cars. But generally, if you're if you you know if you're spending a decent amount of money on the grease, you're going to be uh, you're probably going to get good stuff. Grease, grease, grease. There we go. Now we put our new cog in. Then we put our old cog on, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um. I will just get the old uh, bench power supply here and throw some volts at this motor just to make sure he spins. I'm going to do that now. Whee. Let's see if we're going to hold it up. 
we're not in view here. Still not in view, but this is really hard. Uh, right. Uh, do keep in mind, of course, that with um, a lot of isopropyl alcohols, um, they add stuff to it to make it extremely unpalatable. So when you buy stuff that is, say, 60% isopropyl alcohol, um, they, uh, they add things to it to make it taste disgusting and burn as you drink it and all that sort of stuff. 100% stuff? I don't know. I mean, that's just pure alcohol. I imagine... I imagine the only risk with that would just be getting extremely drunk extremely quickly. Um, but just, you got to remember, it's not made for human consumption. It is a poison. They do say poison on them. So, you know, bad news. All right, so um, I have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of these cogs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you my lots of cogs. Um, oh, I'm going to show you a few anyway because I can't be bothered grabbing anymore. So here's my, uh, here's my cogs. That's a little bit grubby, as you can see, but here's all the cogs. As you can see, they all go that same color, and you can see a lot of them end up getting this little green tinge here, and that's just from uh, uh, some corrosion coming from the cog. Geez, my nails are long. Ridiculous. Um, and I'm just going to see if I can demonstrate how soft they are. Yeah, that's how soft they are. It's just bit cheese cog. There we go. Oh, we've got clever people in here. I mean, chemistry and whatnot. Right, let's just zoom out here. Yes, but apart from everything else, when it comes to drinking ethanol, I can't imagine it tastes very nice, so I think that's probably a very bad reason to not drink any of those sorts of things, any of those pure alcohols. I think we'd be a lot better off actually just buying something from a liquor store, something that might actually be designed for human consumption and might actually taste nice. That would be my recommendation. Or am I just talking nonsense? I don't like drinking uh, stuff that's designed for drinking. It always tastes a lot better. Right, so there's our eject cog back in, uh, eject mechanism back in with a new eject cog. Uh, we're going to put the cage back on. Fiddle, 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 fiddle. I didn't do it right. Got to go in that side, then down on that side. There we go. <laughs> and then we'll put our little springs back. And another one. And then let's make it eject. Oops, I forgot a bit. I forgot my little uh, doohickey. Sorry guys, I'm just... Uh... There we go. You gonna close now for me? Will you? Will you? Will you? Okay, now we're 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 we're, near, we're getting there. Getting there. It's it's really hard to time the rotation of this thing. Did I get it that time? I need I need the there we go. I need the cog to be in a particular position. There we go. I forgot to put this little guy back on. This is a thing that makes the head lift up. When you uh, when it ejects, there we go. So now let's eject again. There we go. Now let's put a disc in, and let's eject it again. Sorry, I did. I got in the way of it. I fouled it. Looks good to me. So this one's all ready for lots more ejects. Yay! So I'm going to put that up here. What are we going to work on now? What are your thoughts? I've got a few options. I can fiddle with that Mac 2 that I was looking at the other day. Oh, 
Uh, see if we can find out what's wrong with that. I've got an SE30 here that needs recapping. Um, what else is on the pile here? I can't really look at that one. Um, yeah, I've got another Mac 2. I've got another Mac 2 that needs recapping. So I've got a Mac 2 that needs recapping and some trace repair. I've got a Mac 2 that I worked on the other day that doesn't work. I've got an SE30 here that needs recapping. What are, what are people's preferences? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Uh, so let's just run through those options one more time. Recapping an SE30, which <laughs> I've never done one of those before. But anyhow, it's just, you know, it has to be done. Um, so recapping an SE30, recapping a Mac 2, or trying to fix the Mac 2 that I couldn't fix the other day. Okay, we've got one vote for an SE30. Uh, for that floppy drive. Oh, no, actually, the floppy drive is on. Did I do it? Did I enter it separately? Um, um, just, uh, bear with me just one moment. Um, okay, someone just brought me a glass of water, which is very nice because I'm a little bit parched because it is warm here at the moment. So, um, uh, I was just uh, reading something here. Is it a Mac 2? Vote for the Mac 2. Okay. Trying to fix the Mac 2. We're getting a lot of people that want to fix the Mac 2 here. Uh, currently, Australian uh, 2SI 12 volt issues, no good PS2. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, 2SIs are a bit of a bugger, I'll be honest. Um, yeah. I can t I can I haven't got a two SI board here at the moment. I've got one in my donors, but I can tell you some of the areas you might need to look around. But uh, I vote trying to fix the Mac Two, fix the Mac Two, trace repair. Vote for the Mac Two. Oh, hello, Horst. Horst is here. I didn't see you sneak in. Um, Akimbers. I don't think I saw you either. Uh, I vote for one of my Mac Twos. Akim. Ah, ha 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 ha. Yes. Hello. So. Thank you for joining. Uh, that was your Mac 2 I was working on the other day. So this is the one that I need to try and fix. So, all right. So I think uh, <laughs> the most complex and challenging. Okay, so well, let's have a look at the Mac 2. Now, I'm not necessarily going to fix this one today because sometimes when the fixing of these, it really gets a little bit tedious and dull and boring and all that sort of stuff. And we, you know, we, we can do without tedious and boring and dull. So this is the Mac 2 that I'm, I was referring to. Now, I couldn't get this to chime or do anything the other day. Um, I could hear a pop in the speaker when I hit it with power, but I couldn't get it to do anything else. Now, um, I, uh, I have concerns that the RAM that I've put in it to test with, uh, is not suitable for it. Mac 2s are unbelievably fiddly when it comes to, uh, to getting, you know, to RAM that they like. So I, what I might do is actually just move RAM from another Mac 2 board that I know works. So do that. So, yoink. Yoink. so just so everyone knows, the uh, customer, uh, my customer is actually watching this video at the moment, so I have to be on, on my best behavior um, and uh, make it look like I'm doing everything very professionally. Uh, so, so, one of my favorite things about the Mac 2 is this board is so big that it doesn't fit on my desk properly, but that's, that's neither here nor there. So, a little recap on what we've actually been doing with this one so far. When I got this board, some of the caps had already been replaced. Uh, some of these ones around here. There were a few pads where there were no caps uh, that I needed to put them on. So they were, I think, these three here, the three there. They, they, those pads had been cleaned, but there were no caps on them, so I had to put caps on there. Uh, the, I think those ones there as well. Uh, and the axial, sorry, the uh, yeah, axial capacitors, which is namely this one, this one, this one, and there was one there as well. Uh, they hadn't been replaced. So they've now been removed and replaced. So we've got essentially all new uh, capacitors on here now. So all, all new capacitors on there. And then of course, we also had quite a bit of trace damage. So if we go in and have a look under the microscope. Uh, so 
little recap for the folks that were uh, who didn't actually get to see it. So this is where the battery is, and of course this is where the damage happens. So these are the ugly traces here, um, and this this is a couple of the trace repairs. So I'm just going to grab the tweezers so I can point them out because my work is so tidy you'll never know where I repaired it. That's a joke, of course. Um, so there's a trace repair there. So there's a new piece of wire running across there and down there. So there were breaks in this trace along there. Uh, there was a little break here I wasn't happy with, so I just put a new piece of wire on there. Uh, this one here, this one was an absolute mess. This is one that goes at a little angle down there, goes through the hole and then is joined up on the other side. Same with this one, another trace repair there, just going from there to there. I've uh, got another one here, going from here all the way along there to there. Now keep in mind, of course, that all these will get coated with UV solder mask when I finish, which will not only make them look a little bit nicer, but will also uh, keep them well protected. Uh, this We had some ugliness going along here, so I went in and uh, just added some extra wire on top of this. Even though that one wasn't actually broken, I still did it. And then the other spot, which is right over here on this little chip here, he had some trace damage going along here. So that was broken there, and it was broken there, and it was broken there. So I've just run a wire from there to there, and then hooped that wire around to there. So that's restoring that connection there. So that was good. Uh, this one here looked a little bit ugly, but let's just... And then, of course, the next thing I did was I gave this board a clean, because there was a lot of gunk and corrosion on there. And there still is. It probably needs some more cleaning as well. It's just... Yeah, that's all good. I know you guys can't hear the beep, or if you can, it's very, very faint. But Now, anyhow, I basically uh, did all these things, and then I fired it up, and it still wasn't working. Um, I went through, and just look at that. Doesn't, isn't that ugly? I might end up taking that off and sticking that chip back down again. I just don't like the look of these. See how crunchy they look? Ugh. So we might take that chip off and re-solder re it on. Um... So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, I um, no, just totally lost the thread. I was going to say something else, but it's gone. So, um, this one here doesn't look too crash hot under there. I think I better I better trace repair that. I mean, I think we've still got continuity on that, but I don't like it. So I might take those two off and just run a wire underneath those because I just don't like that. Um, it's not uncommon to end up with trace problems around here. This is leading up to the power switch, but um, it, this one's not as bad as some of the ones I've seen. But the fact that this one is completely dead after all this work is uh, has, has left me feeling blue. All right, let's just have a quick look here. No cussing or beating these things. <laughs> um, oh yes, you were talking about the little dots on the on the screen. Yeah, lens needs a clean. Yeah, it would be good if it was just a clean, but that was basically me being silly with a laser beam. Pew pew. This is a four hundred and five nanometer, I think nanometer um, laser beam. Um, some ugliness there as well. Look at that. See that? Let's get that a scrape. And I think it'll have copper under it, but I still want to give it a scrape. Yeah. Jeez, it's only just connected. And I, I nearly missed that one. I wonder if we've got more like that. Gripes. The big ugly ones that are easy to see, they're the great ones. It's the ones that aren't easy to see that are, that are always a concern. All right. Okay, well, we're going to lift this capacitor off and we're going to clean underneath it and we're going to put a new trace and things and stuff and yeah, everything will be happy. Uh, oh, what's happening here? Sorry. Right, so um, I want to remove these capacitors, but I, I want to do it in a way where I can actually use them again because they're brand new capacitors. So 
Um, I don't want to necessarily hit it with hot air because hot air has a tendency to make these uh, orange tantalum capacitors go brown and it doesn't look very nice. I don't like brown capacitors, no. So let's see if we can just get these off using a little bit of wick and a little bit of persistence. I'm just going to suck that solder away as much of that solder as I can. Coming up from the other side. Mm, mm, mm. A bit blowy outside at the moment, so if anyone hears any big banging sounds, that's usually the sound of things up, things falling off the tree. So that one came off nice and easy, which is good. because I don't want to uh, damage any pads on this. I mean, I I can repair the pad if I damage it, but I'd just rather not damage it in the first place. There we go. No pad damage. Looking good. Just going to check the focus here. Right, now those little orange blobs there, they are uh, component adhesive, left over from the old component was there. I am going to goodbye them. I use a little bit of hot air just to soften it up because it's usually quite hard. And then, boom, 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 boom. there we go. There we go. Now we're going to do some scrapey scrape. And that really does look like a trace break, doesn't it? I'm going to put a whole new uh, bit of wire right along there. So, let's douse this sucker in flux. Oh, the other thing I've also got to look at is a MacBook Pro 15 inch. It's giving me all sorts of grief at the moment. Had it here before and I thought I fixed it and I didn't. It's come back. Don't you hate it when that happens? Right, let's get some wick. Let's clean them up. Um, my recommendation to Achim, if you are watching, is um, when you're putting on your new caps, you can probably use just a little bit more solder than you're using at the moment. Found a couple of joins that were. They look nice and tidy, but when I got there, they were joined, but they were only just held on by a tiny little bit of solder. So you can probably just add a little bit more solder, which is kind of the opposite to what I normally recommend to people. Most of the time when I get people's boards sent to me, they're, uh, they're, there's just way too much solder on there. Um, but uh, that's just that would be the only recommendation I would make, a very minor one. Uh, I'm recapping an LC power supply and I don't know which caps go where. Any idea where I can get a guide? It's a really good question, House of Moth. There's this website called recappermac.com or .com.au, whichever you prefer. Recappermac, one word. And on there, you will find a, um, a guide for which capacitors go where on an LC power supply. Now, of course, that was all just fast, that whole thing, because Jay knows exactly where that is. And, oh, he found the link. How cool. Is that the website? That's the one. Yeah. Don't forget, folks, jump on and have a look at uh, the House of Moths YouTube channel. Check out some of the awesome content he has there. We all do like to uh, pr help promote each other. And... Um, and same with Mac 84. I'm only going to promote the ones that are here, okay? So the ones, the Mac, the um, Mac yet guys that didn't turn up, they don't get any freebies today. No way. Um, oh, Dana's here. Dana does stuff from time to time. So check out Dana does stuff. Uh, we have high hopes for Dana doing stuff in the future. He's uh, set himself up with a nice little, um, nice little area for doing stuff. He just needs to get a few little technical things sorted out with, uh, um, uh, with um, the uh, the live streaming software. I, I believe he's got that under control. That's happening. All right, 
So, time for trace repair. Now, this board is really the wrong way around for the camera because the board's running vertically and the camera's horizontal. And so, yeah, this is going to suck. But uh, this board is too long for me to twist it around any other way. So, sorry, guys. Now, I need to get my wire that I use for doing these trace repairs. And it's here. I mean, it's here. It's, it's here. I found it. I'm just having trouble with this one. There we go. So this is the enameled wire that I use. Uh, it's enameled uh, because if I have to run this a long way across the board, it saves me from creating an accidental short. The enamel comes off nice and easily with a bit of heat from the soldering iron for when I do need to actually adhere it. So get some flux. Get a little bit of solder on the end of my iron. Get some tevasers. Hold this wire in place. I'm shaking a little bit. Sorry about that, folks. As I've mentioned before, when, um, when you are looking at things through a microscope, it makes it look like you're shaking, like you've got some sort of... Um, nerve disease but uh it's just the uh the nature of um of it being sort of magnified my hands are actually quite steady they just look like they're wobbling terribly well that wobbling but they're only wobbling a little so oh, come on i want that a little bit tighter There we go. Let's get a little bit in the middle. That puts in here as well. I want this to be soldered down in between the uh, the pads there. Get some solder. Pinch it from there. Hey, hey, aren't you there? Not there. Stop moving to the left, you. There, thank you. It was so straight before, and now it's got a kink in it. What gauge of wire? This one is that I'm using is 34 AWG. That's a, the American wire gauge scale, which is, I have no idea what it means, but it is nice and easy to look up. So that's, this is 34, 34, 34. Ah. <sighs> Don't you pre-tin the enameled wire? How the hell does the enamel melt so easy? I always have problems working with enameled wire. And my tip is beveled. I insert the wire. So I blob the tip and it still doesn't want to. Um, I don't know. It might be the type of enamel. It might be the type of wire. I'm not really sure. I mean, as, as you saw the way I did it there, it uh, it really didn't take much to get that enamel to come off at all. Um, so I, I I'm not really sure. Um, I tend to run with a pretty hot soldering iron tip. That might have something to do with it. Um, I like working with a really hot soldering iron tip. And as I say to people, it's not necessarily the best way to do if you're beginning. I'm not saying you're beginning, but for anyone that might be beginning, just getting new to soldering and stuff like that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend working with your soldering iron tip as hot as I do. Um, it, and people ask me, what, what temperature? What temperature? What temperature is soldering iron at? What temperature? All the time. Um, like it's somehow going to be magically the reason why people are having trouble with soldering. It's not, it's not the case. I mean, really, um, I work with a hot soldering iron because I like to kind of regulate the temperature with the amount of time that I have the uh, soldering iron tip on what I'm soldering. So if I'm... Uh, you know, if I'm soldering a component in, the, 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 the tip of the soldering iron is only on there for a very brief moment. Just get it hot real quick, get that joint, lift it out again. If you're 
kind of new to soldering it and you're, you're spending a lot of time with the soldering iron on the board, if it's too hot, you're going to damage things. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure why you're having uh, your grief, you, with some grief there. Um, on the way from Okay, yeah, cool. 320 degrees for you with low melting point solder. I use low melting point solder, but just to give you an idea, my iron's on 450C all the time. Uh, but as I, I say, I don't recommend other people run it at 450C. That's just, just kind of, it's a bit dangerous. I'm painting on UV solder mask here at the moment. Um, I want this to be coated and uh, protected before I put these caps back on. Uh, this stuff is uh, obviously as a liquid, as you can see, and it cures when exposed to UV light. Now, in terms of what UV light you should be using, I've got a UV laser here that I'm going to use to cure this, but yeah, the sun does quite a good job, I and mean, it's so sunny out here at the moment, I reckon I could probably put this out in the sun for about five minutes, if that, then it would be cured. So you can see this does two things. Not only does it provide you with a uh, kind of like a, uh, a seal, so if you've got a situation where you've maybe got some exposed copper, you don't want it to oxidize, you can paint this stuff on it so you seal it from, you make sure you don't get any oxygen on it. Is that hermetically sealed, something like that? It's called anaerobic, um, uh, as in no air. Uh, but the other thing it also does is it's quite hard, so it works as a protectant. So, you know, if this gets bumped or something in the future, it's, gonna, it's not going to get damaged. Okay, so let's get our little laser beam. Pew, 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 pew. All right. This is my laser beam here. I've got a few of them. I've bought three now. And the one that I'm using at the moment has so far been the best one. So uh, basically you hit this with the UV light. The, um, the, the uh, solder mask cures. It goes hard. And then um, it brings peace to the world. Fantastic. I might have embellished that last bit. You do actually see this kind of change when you hit it with the UV. It starts off really glossy and then it goes a little bit more matte. Hello, Matt. Now, of course, one of the things that I'm going to end up with this here is I've got a piece of wire that's going to be sitting underneath these capacitors so they're going to be sitting up on the board slightly up which is not good but you know we do what we have to do please point the laser at your camera so we can really see what it looks like yeah no i will do that when i get a new camera i haven't got a new camera yet i haven't i haven't got the money to splurge on a new camera just yet which is why you're still looking at a camera with little dots on it um but uh, when I do get a new camera, I'm going to just go to town on this one with the laser and just see what we can do to it. Turn that into a live stream. I'll have the live stream and it'll be, Bruce destroys his camera. I'll probably get the most views on that one. People love watching destruction. Now, one thing I often do um, when I am curing this UV, um, I do something, I, I, I do a step which is I think probably unnecessary, but I do it because it just, I like what it, what it makes the UV solar mask look like, and that is I hit it with a hot air station. Um, um, like this, you have a look at what that UV solar mask looks like now. And after it's been hit with the hot, the hot air station, you have a look at what it looks like afterwards. And I don't know why, I just like it. I don't like it. Just going to get a little heat shield there to protect the RAM slots. Yeah, did you see it makes it go like really matte, real matte finish? I don't know, I just like that. I just like it. I don't know why. Ah. 
You should be wearing laser safety glasses. I should. I'm not, though. <laughs> so I've bought, I've bought three lasers. Uh, this one here, I vaguely remember the ad saying that it was one. I might say. Here we go. Power less than one milliwatt. So it says power less than one milliwatt. And this is the brightest one that I bought. This one says power less than five milliwatt. This one's not as bright as the other one. So someone explain that to me. Huh? Huh? See what I do like about this one? It just comes apart. So this is another one that I bought. It comes apart in little, lots of little bits. Anymore? No, that's it. That's, so that's the main laser part there. This one runs off one of those 18, was it 18650 batteries, 3.6 volt. And I could wire this up to the power supply. But I'm not sure I could be bothered. I do have one of those batteries, but it's in one of my other torches and I can't be bothered moving it. So this has got a little magnifiery thingy on it, just designed to focus the beam. Doesn't do a very good job. And to be honest, this is the one that's less than five. It's as bright, probably even a little less bright. Than the, the one so I don't understand how that system works then I bought one that was meant to be less than 10 and it was dimmer than both of these so I don't I, I don't get those those measurements I, I don't understand I just don't I just don't right okay I'm gonna take a quick little poll here is this the most boring live stream I've ever done because I think it might be up there Uh, uh, uh. Have I got any thumbs down? I haven't looked. But does anyone thumbs down me? Yeah. Let's just check the numbers here. Sitting at 45. I don't think I've been able to crack that elusive 50 yet today. Hmm. Everyone, tell your friends, come and watch. See if we can get 50. I actually, um, interestingly enough, when I was very first investigating the uh, UV laser thing, I pulled apart a broken Blu-ray and got the UV laser out of that. Uh, and that worked really well until I accidentally blew up the laser. Um, That one was a, a quite a strong laser. Right, so seesaw time. Fiffle. There we go. Okay, that's down. Do the same for this one. People that are good at a craft are not boring. Isn't that nice to say? Thank you very much. All right. So there's those capacitors back on the board with our little trace repair running underneath them. Um... So let's just have it. We're going to have to just have it keep inspecting here because we know there's something wrong. Uh, we know there's something wrong somewhere. I just haven't found it yet. Um, one of the, there are a couple of things I always look at when people have had a go at recapping it themselves. And this is never meant to be a criticism. You know, I say this all the time because um, I hear people saying, oh, I've just recapped this board and it still doesn't work. What should I do? And the first thing you do is you check your work. I do. I mean, you know, if I've recapped something and it's not working, first thing I do is go back and check my work. It's the most likely thing to have caused a, caused an issue. 
Um, there are a few things that I look out for when I have a board that has been recapped by someone. The first thing I do, I always look for, is I look on the underside of the board and look for any of these smaller components, these little um, ceramic um, capacitors or these little resistors. I look to see that any that have been accidentally bumped off. Because if people are recapping stuff for the first time, they might be moving them around on a table or something like that and they accidentally knock a capacitor off. So that's one of the first things I check for. I have a look on the underside of the board, see that everything that is here, everything is meant to be here, is here. So that's that's one of the things that I do. Another thing I often check for is, as uh, Steve has, has mentioned there, is the old solder ball situation. When you're using a hot air station, you're using it with these older boards and you might be heating things up, sometimes solder balls can get formed. That's because the solder gets a crust on the outside. Uh, the crust on the outside doesn't melt, but the solder underneath does. It then forces these little bits of solder through the cracks and they come out as little solder balls and they can get wedged between two pins uh, on, on a chip. So, um, so I check for, for solder balls. Um, and then, of course, I have to check over the capacitors that people have put down. And again, it's not meant to be like uh, rude or insulting, but, uh, you know, I just check to make sure they've been soldered properly. They haven't accidentally created a bridge. I just want to get some solder onto this. This was some nasty looking traces that I exposed before, and I just want to make sure they're tin so that they don't oxidize. Let's have a look at the microscope view. I've mentioned in my live streams before that I have a real fondness for the Mac 2. I like repairing these, and that's because I had one. It was the very first Mac that I bought with my own money. It was a Mac 2. And I bought it in, I think it was 1992. So it was by no means a new computer at the time. Uh, it was definitely second hand. Um, but by that stage, there were way faster computers around. So it meant that I was able to get it for a reasonable price. There's a little spot here. I'm just going to zoom in on it. Spot. See the spot? Bit hard to see but you see that little black spot there don't like the look of it don't like it did you test that line to see if the brake is fixed you no i didn't let's hope it is i will test it though i'll test it for everyone's enjoyment okay so that little back dot there it's just on the surface copper underneath is fine let's get some solar on there and then we can move on Okay, testing time. Uh, uh, stupid big board. Stupid big board. Right, where does he go? He goes from, oh man, how am I going to test this? He goes underneath the switch. I have to get the thing on the other side with the thing and the thing. I don't want to do that. Where's this go? Where's this go? Where's it go? Oh man. Okay. Let's go beepity beep. See if we can get a, a nice resounding beep. Put this down here, and this up there. Uh. Oh, the mic key of the uh, multimeter, not on. Um, Always do this before you do a test to make sure it is actually beeping. Yeah, it works. I did it. It beeped. Every uh, power off. Okay, so Greg Thatcher, it's an interesting question you got there um, about uh, I, I, one of the things that I have found when it comes to soldering iron tips is that. Because I solder quite regularly, the tips generally stay tinned fairly well. So I don't really do any terms of kind of maintenance on these just because they get used. Um, a lot of the cheap tips that you buy for cheap soldering irons are often made of cheap metal and they tend to die away. Just ask Steve from Mac 84 about that. He bought some cheap tips and they were just, they were just withering away every time he sold it. So uh, I'd say probably the uh, how long they last has a lot to do with the uh, the quality of the tip. Now, I I really do want to take this chip off because I just don't like the look of any of those pads on that. So we're just going to do a little bit of preventative here. 
Um, I'm just going to take that uh, chip off and we're going to clean up the pads and then we're going to put it back on again. Also give us an opportunity to check all of those pads and make sure that we don't have any breaks or anything like that. I'm going to need myself a heat shield, which I'm going to just pop here because it's right next to the uh, one of the new bus slots. Um, they're kind of old bus slots these days, aren't they? But um, let's do that. I might spin this around this way. Put that there. There we go. So let's get some flux onto there because because. Because of the wonderful things he does. Da -da 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 -da. And then we're going to lift this guy off. Is he at least tweezers big enough? Yes, they are. Tekken music. Hello there. Da -da -da -da. Right. I don't want to stuff up my trace repair when I remove this. There we go. Oh, she comes. Let's put that over here for safekeeping. And then let's start looking, getting this cleaned up. I just have to move this a little bit because the board's digging into my fat gut. Uh, to clean up pads, I uh, use flux, I use solder, and I use heat. So I get the flux on there, I add some new solder or solder, depending on which part of the world you're from. And I just clean up like this, adding new solder, pushing out the old. I want, when I finish this, I want those pads to look like little shiny capsules. The solder is adhering to the whole part of the pad, not just a bit of it. Okay, well, I think that's enough of this stage. I will now get my trusty wick. Oops, and drop a pair of tweezers on my leg. Okay. Um, right, okay. All right, get some wick. This is the stuff where you have to be really, really careful. We don't want to remove any uh, pads. I don't want to apply too much heat to them because pads do come off very easily. I did a video a while ago on um, sort of fixing boards with damaged pads and uh, I demonstrated that just how easy it is to lift off a pad using a little bit of heat from a soldering iron. So. Just got to be cautious, careful, and absolutely make sure that when you move the wick around on the board, that the solder is molten, because the solder hardens, and then you can end up with your um, uh, wick sticking to a pad, and then you just give it a yank, and the next thing you know, you've just lifted the pad off the board. All right, let's have a look under here. We're just going to clean this up. A bit of alcohol and a toothbrush. Let's see what this looks like. So we've got some dots. I don't like dots. See the dot? Dot. Dot. Dirty, dirty knife. Let's just clean that up. Ooh, yep, nah, it's just just surface. The actual trace is okay. Let's have a look at these uh, pads while we're at it. See if anything looks like a break.
Look good. Look fine. Look nice. Yep. Okay, all good. So then we just got to stick that component back on the board. After I get a little bit of solder onto that exposed bit of copper there. Who's going? Who's going? Me friends, but I have to work tomorrow. Good night. No worries, Steve. Thank you for joining. I apologize. I am streaming probably quite late on a Sunday evening. So it's 2.30 in the afternoon here. I am hungry. I haven't had lunch. Um, all right, let's get our... Oops. Whoopsie. Oh, crap. Come on. What the hell, man? There we go. Okay. So this is my component. Might clean him up a little bit before I put him on. Just move this board out of the way. <clears throat> so, sweet dreams, Steve. And let's hope that your work is all fun tomorrow. Just going to get some flux under here. I just kind of, it's called cool, this reconditioning these, um, these pins. Let's get some solder, great big chunk of solder. And I get my tweezers and I go like this. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. More flux. Oh, God, this stinks. Okay. Looks good. Sorry, we're a bit out of focus there. It smells like a barbecue. I thought someone was barbecuing. You get time for that. Right, Al, hot. So, what we need to look for here, I didn't pay much attention when I took this off. So, you can see this dip here. That dip there shows you it's meant to line up with the dip on the chip, and then that white dot right there shows you where pin one is. And pin one is indicated on this by a little dot. So, I know this goes that way, like that. Little white dot match up with this dot. I really wish this was at a different angle. I'm going to have to spin this around again. Stick it into my gut again. Now, when I'm putting these surface mount caps on, I have mentioned this before in my live streams, what I do is I, uh, I tack one pin on on each side, and then, I, uh, and then I drag solder the rest. So let's just get that there. So we've just soldered that one pin on there, and then, whoops, did two, let's solder it on, and then I can just drag solder the rest of these. Whee! Don't ever dra drag solder unless you are using a good quality no clean flux. It just won't work. There we go. Okay. He's looking much better. <sighs> no, actually, no, this, that wasn't a fish smell. That was a smell of the flux. It's more of a chemically smell. It's just gross. It's gross. It's just gross. Right. Now, I am still fairly sure this is not going to work. So I really don't feel like I've found a significant enough problem on this to warrant the fact that it wasn't starting up. But I think it makes sense to test it. I need to make a what the hell mensch. <laughs> what the hell mensch. 
What the hell, man? You need to, in order to get that inspiration uh, for for that shirt, Steve, you need to go back and watch um, your very first recapping live stream, that one that went on for eight hours. You, know, you get into the what the hell man feel when you watch that. Uh, right, so let's get some RAM into this little sucker because there's no onboard RAM on these. I'm going to take the RAM from this computer. Um, I'm assuming that the RAM in this computer works. But when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. That works better if it's written. Just removing the, the, um, the um, sims from this other board. Um, not my favourite job because these use the plastic holders for, you know, the little plastic things that hold the sims in position and they break really easily. I do actually have in my terms of service that although all care is taken, given the age of some of these computers, sometimes it is just the plastic breaks and there's nothing I can do about it. And so I am incredibly careful, but uh, some of those plastics, uh, they have to be bent in order to let for things to you know be moved out and they're just not they can't be bent anymore i mean i had to remove a hard drive from an lc575 recently and the, the little caddy thing that you know the little tray sits in there is held in by a piece of plastic that's that you bend it down to lift it out and i'm just getting there you just push it down a little bit then snap off it comes piffle Okay, so this is interesting looking RAM. It's uh, old because it's uh, C 10. No, you can't see it because it's out of focus. That means it's 100 nanoseconds, so it's relatively old RAM, which is good. That's what we want in a big old clunker like this. I'm only going to stick four SIMs in so that we'll have four megs of RAM in here. That's enough to test whether it's actually working. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, please set your expectations accordingly. I don't expect us to get anything from this. I think it will just be completely and totally dead. Because I said, I do not believe I've found the problem with this. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I wasn't actually going to look at this board. Because I just think this one, just going on too long, will just get too boring. We can um, pull components off and put them back on again and do stuff like that. Make, try and make it interesting. Got a speaker here. This one is out of a 2V something. I think, 2VI maybe, uh, I think, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's 16 ohm impedance, should be fine for this. Um, what else do we need? So we've got that, we need a power supply. Now I'm going to use my forceful power supply. This is the one that uh, should make it start up, even if the startup circuit doesn't work. Uh, um, um, let's connect these up. I repaired the, the other day I was using this and uh, um, one of the wires had fallen out of this. I fixed that up. Basically, when I made this connector in the first place, I didn't have the right sort of tool for uh, crimping these little Molex things. Let's recap the LC power supply with the help of Frank's Creation Recap Light. I feel like not a big deal right about now. Well done, sir. Congratulations. Does it work? Have you, do you have the means to test that power supply, Jay? I'm just curious. Right. So this is going to be me just plugging the power in. This this will just come on. This will just start shooting out power. Pew, pew, just like instantly. So as soon as I plug this in, We'll just see what happens, but I don't expect anything to happen. So just a reminder of that. Yeah, still not good. Um, still not happening. So we've still got a trace break here somewhere. Could, of course, be a problem component. Uh, luckily, I have four of these here at the moment, so I've got no problems with swapping components over and checking for that sort of thing. So, um, But I do just believe it is almost definitely just a problem with the... Uh, Capacitors. Uh, it could be a short somewhere. 
there's some heat coming to these um, CPUs, so we know we definitely have power coming to some places. Uh, could be an issue with the ROMs. These ones don't use a ROM sim, do they? Oh, it's a shame I could use the old uh, Rominator, but they didn't do that until the 2FX. Mm. So, yeah, okay, so this, as I say, this, this particular power supply. Just checking, just checking. Just checking. When I press the restart button, I just hear the faintest pop coming from the speaker, which tells me that I know that it is actually going through the restart thing, but it's just not able to start up at all. So more, more um, inspection is required. Oh, falling down. It works. Of course it works. I'm a pro. I know you are. I know you are. It's like, I mean, you'd never leave a solder ball floating around on a board that you'd recapped or anything like that. I'm so, I'm so below the belt today. That's terrible. That's an awful thing to say. <clears throat> Still, you know, it's the sort of thing that Jay would say to me, so it's fine. Um... I found this the other day. I can't remember if I mentioned it on one of my live streams already. This is a TS100 soldering iron. For anyone that's looking for a real budget soldering iron, these aren't bad. Uh, they're not bad at all. Um, they're open source, so you can actually load your own firmware on them. The only downside to these is you want a pretty decent power supply for, you know, working on it to get some good temperature from the tip. I've, I have made a big old power supply for my, one of these. These are good. This is not a bad backup. So, there. No, not too expensive either. Right, so let's just have a little, a quick look around. I may end up giving up on this board for the moment, moment and doing doing sort of something else or ending the stream. We'll just see. So I'm just going to have a little look around here. The places that you're going to want to look at close to ground zero. So obviously we've got um, this is where the battery leakage was. Now one of the big problems I see is this here. See how this is. This we've got trace damage really, really close to these. Oh, you can't see anything on the microscope far out. Um, this is battery, 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 leakage, corrosion, damage traces, ROM. Now we've got these little wires running underneath this here. Who knows? One of those could be damaged. So, what do I do? Do I take that holder off and look under it? Hmm? Hmm? And given the fact that we had trace damage here, like eaten all the way through here, and we had trace damage here, it is always possible that there's trace damage on the other side of this there. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Do I take that off? Do I take that holder off? Do I take that whole chip off? Or am I just going way too far? Did you see the small break between the two ROMs? Oh, you're talking about... That's actually a little bit of grit on there. You talking about that? That was just some gunk. Sorry. If that's what you're referring to. All right, I think I'm going to have to take it off. I'm going to have to take this chip off. I mean, it, we're, talk, we're talking about a, a situation that I... Um, um, Achim, if you are watching, that's what I was referring to there. A little bit more solder on the end there would be good. Um, I'm just going to do that now. Yeah, when I very first looked at this board, my first thought was that I didn't like to look at the traces right near this ROM socket. So I sort of feel like, go with the gut, you know? It's not gonna be easy getting this off, especially if my arm machine's not playing along. You can try it, huh? Um, right, so let's start off with prep. 
We're going to do some prep. This is the guy here. We're out of focus. Zip. Oh, I've got a request here, and I'm Steve. I'm going to try and help you out right now. Midstream, how about that? Da -da, da -da -da -da. If he's not watching, I can't answer him on the stream. I have to actually type it to him. Yes, that is correct. You are correct, sir. Yes, sir, you are correct. That's correct. See, helping people out even when I'm in the middle of a live stream. That's the kind of person I am. Right, when I'm wanting to remove solder from holes, one of the things I do is I add solder. It always seems counterintuitive, but it helps. Uh, I don't like the fact that these pins have been bent, so I'm going to try and bend them straight. When people are assembling these, they put the they put the um, component in, then they bend the pins to hold them in place before they then add solder. And so I'm having to bend them all back now. Now here's the question. Here's the question I'll be asking myself for a little while. Is this the right one? Did I get the right one? Am I actually doing this to the right one? Or is it am I the wrong the wrong holder? I'm just gonna spin him around because I am right handed, so I wanna use my right hand to uh, To hold the soldering on, I want to push to the left. Push, push. Oh, that one's a difficult one. So, how am I going to do this without my arm machine working well? How? On the bright side, this solder looks like it's actually moving really well, so I'm hoping that even with my um machine misbehaving, I might be able to get this to work. Is that speaker you used out of a 2VX 2VI? My Performance 600 is missing it. If you have the specs, that would be appreciated. Uh, it is. I'm almost certain it is out of a 2VI 2VX, and it's a 16 ohm, one watt. So 16 ohms, no problem finding a replacement for that. Um, yeah, you, sh I, you really shouldn't have any issue. Um, 16 ohms, quite a nice, um, common, uh, impedance. So, there we go. Ooh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, what have I done? Uh, I need my goggles because I can't look at this through the microscope because I need to have my, oh God, sorry, everyone. Let's go to here. Um... Where are my goggles? Uh, for those who haven't watched my streams before and don't know what I'm referring to when I'm referring to my goggles, it's these. Three times magnification glasses that I clip over my normal glasses so that I can see up close because my eyes are getting bad because I am old. This just ain't getting hot. Whack it. It says it's 485 degrees Celsius. I can tell you with a fair degree of certainty it is not. It's uh, wicked all, yeah, I mean, I might, but sometimes wicking just doesn't do it for us. I mean, I just wonder, why is it, does it say that it's 485? I mean, there's obviously a, some sort of thermostat there. I'm good at dropping parts for this thing. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be bothered hunting around for that, so I might just grab another one. Uh, 
thanks for the help. Promise I'm off to bed now, just making the rounds to feed the bunnies before bed. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so let's put this on. Let's get this. Is this still hot? Yeah, it's hotish. Oh, yes, it's hot. And screw this up. Okay, come on, come on, get hot. If not, we will just have to resort to wick. <sighs> well, we could use the brucinator. At least I can video using the brucinator. See how we go. Here's one brucinator. That one sucks, but I knew that one would because that one I think is connected to a ground. That one sucks too. Great. We've got one good one. Let's try wick. I'm going to go through so much wick doing this. Oh, this sucks. This sucks. Not happy. <sighs> some of them just go fine, they just suck all the solder out, and then we move on. Other ones suck. Some just suck. Let's try some more flux on here, shall we? That might help us some. And if I can get the majority of them out, then it's, it's not too bad, but it's when you just have next one after the next one after the next one doesn't come out, and you're just like, oh, it sucks. This would be so much easier if my machine worked, my sucking machine worked. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that thing. I'm gonna pull it apart. And I'll see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. Use the manual one. I did try it, was just wasn't doing a very good job. Just wasn't getting in there. I I couldn't get the tip kind of close enough to the hole for it to be effective and get the solder out. These holes are just too small. Okay, let's move on to here. An uh, interesting thing I wanted to talk to, uh, to well, just mention to folks, um, I obviously repair these, but I also repair stuff around the house when it breaks. I like to try and keep things going for as long as possible. And of course, as we know with, um, you know, planned obsolescence, a lot of things are built these days so they're not designed to last and as much as possible I try and keep things going as long as we can because I just like to do that. Um, I ended up with a coffee machine that uh, one of the ones that uses the capsules I ended up with a capsule coffee machine failing. I won't tell you why it failed but at the end of the day it failed and I thought oh I'm gonna go and have a go at see if I can have a go at fixing this and when I opened it up what I found was that it had a fuse, but it wasn't a fuse like a component fuse. It was what they call a trace fuse. And that is 
there's a piece of trace on the board that's wire of a particular thickness that is designed so that it will actually burn off the board and work as a fuse. So rather than having a, an actual physical fuse, it's just a piece of copper printed onto the PCB. Now, okay, they obviously save a lot of money in manufacture doing it that way. But what that also means is that if that fuse does blow, you just have to throw that whole board away um, because you can't really accurately put a new piece of wire on there to replace that trace fuse that's going to blow, you know, with any sort of real predictability. Um, and the other thing that was very annoying is that those trace fuses are obviously not very accurate because when this trace fuse did blow, um, it took a whole stack of comp components out with it. So it was obviously blowing too late anyway um, and not really serving to protect other components on that board. It might protect components on other boards, on other parts of the device. But I have to say I was all manner of unimpressed that they didn't just have a fuse component on the board that can be replaced. Um, I'd just be interested to see if anyone else has experienced that in any repairs, actually having a, uh, a fuse that is, um, well, when the fuse blows that it damages the board. Except wait for 15 minutes, don't want to miss the ending. Uh, look, I think you'll be fine for 15 minutes, Jay. I don't think I'll be much longer than 15 minutes, but I, I do believe I will still be going in 15 minutes. So. Because I, it, it, yeah, I'm taking this stupid thing off. Oh. I always remember, folks, anyone who's watching, if you have a question for me, uh, feel free to put it in the chat. If I uh, don't respond to it, it may just be because I've missed it. Um, just do the at sign Brankus Creations, and that will uh, usually make the uh, question stand out enough for me to see it. Or if you really want your question to stand out, you can always do a super chat. That will definitely make it stand out. I don't ask people necessarily to do super chats, but I certainly don't complain when people do. Um, there's been a fair bit of generosity lately and for that I thank everyone. I am heading towards 5,000 subscribers. I do believe I'll be there in probably a week or two, which is a pretty big thing for me. I feel like I've got most of the solder out of those. Andrew, fair, almost 1am here. Fair enough and it is a school night. So thank you for joining. Do I have a fume extractor? I do not. Um, I have a fan over my left shoulder blowing on me, which help, definitely does help to uh, eradicate some of the fumes, but it is not really, well, it's, when I say I don't have a fume extractor, yes, I do have a fume extractor, but I don't use it when I'm doing my live streams and it's because it makes a terrible noise. Um, I am in the process of building a fume extractor, something a bit better than what I have at the moment. Um, and it's just going to be some fans in a tube that just blows straight out there and I'm hoping to be able to mount the fans on the other side of the wall so they'll be quiet. So that's my plan. Now, of course, fume extraction is very, very important when you're doing this stuff. Uh, it's the flux mainly. I know I'm using leaded solder, but lead doesn't become uh, a fume at this temperature. Um, it's uh, the smoke that's coming off is all the flux. And that's, of course, not, you shouldn't be breathing that, like, that in. The main risk with the lead is, of course, to make sure that you wash your hands after soldering. This particular pin here is connected to a ground. And that's why I'm having so much trouble getting it to melt because all that heat's being sucked away. Oh, jeez. God. So, can I get this off now?
Right, 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 right. One of the advantages I have with building a fume extractor here is all I essentially need to do is make the fumes go outside. Um, it's not like I need to clean the fumes before they go outside because I'm on the other side of this wall is outside. So. Um. So, 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 I need to try and get this off now, and I might uh, enlist the help of my trusty hot air station for that. I need to do this in a way where I don't damage anything. More importantly, I want to make sure that I preserve whatever it looks like underneath this thing, so I can get a good old look as to whether that might be the reason why it's not working. Uh, and I can't find my thing. I saw it earlier today, it's here somewhere. Has anyone seen my thing? I don't have a name for it. It's just my thing. I saw it. I saw it before. Dag nabbit. I'll try a spudger. How about that? So, I'm going to just try and feed that under there. It's a bit hard to see, isn't it? It's a bit hard to see what I'm doing. Let's get this out of the way. Sucks. I hate doing this this way. Really do. Why? Can't read. What education, what steps got your service to the point it is now? Um, that would be. Uh, all self-taught. Um, I am not an engineer, nor do I ever pretend to be. Um, I'm actually a programmer, computer programmer by trade. This really just came from a passion. Um, when it comes to the soldering and stuff like that, that all just comes down to practice. Um, that certainly is in my instance. And then I just learn stuff as I go. Um, I just read things and watch videos and that's getting me nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. I just don't want to do any damage to this thing. That's the thing that really concerns me. Uh, I really should take this, the chip off first. Take the chip off the old block. That's where I'm looking for my thing. My thing that I use to take chips off with. And it was here. I mean, I looked at it today. I have looked at it on this desk today. On this day. And it's gone. Ah, oh, here it is right in front of me. So. Um... I'm taking the wrong chip. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes to it, you know, when you when you are in a situation where it's you've got somewhere easy to move the fumes to, uh, th there's not much to a fume extractor, really, is there? I mean, it's just something that sucks air out of the way. I want to get one of those hosey tuby things that I can actually just sit right here, so that I can suck air out from a very um, specific location. Um, okay, I think I might get a better go at this now. We'll just see. Because I found the thing. One bloody pin here, just being so stubborn, making my life. If, if I go to all these links and find no broken traces under this, 
I'll be so cross. So this guy here, this one's giving me grief. Uh, I wonder if I might just get a bit more heat with a larger soldering iron tip. How's the air conditioner fun going, Bruce? You must almost need it today. Yeah, I can still cope with this temperature quite well. It's 33 outside at the moment. This is, for me, this is all right. I'm getting a little bit sweaty, but this isn't too bad at all. I can cope with this. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to get worse. Right, let's see if I can coax some more solar out of this guy. Soldering Basics video, I just wanted to say thanks for making that video. 19 are going to be attempting to replace my iPad Air 2 charging port now. Thanks, you are most welcome. Thank you very much for watching it. I do actually have some more uh, beginner soldering videos planned. Um, I'm planning to do a uh, uh, building a kit video. Um, I'm going to just be building a little kit with a bit of soldering just to, uh, to help people out with uh, learning to solder. Um, but thank you, that's great. I, I really appreciate that feedback. Thank you very much. That video is very popular at the moment, getting lots and lots of views of that one. Um, it's one where I basically just go through and explain just soldering, all the different bits and pieces, the, uh, you know, sort of the tools that you use, the, uh, all the basics. Can you believe this one? Look at him. He's just been such a stick in the mud. Same with this one. You're no better. He sucks. Add some solder. I did. I did add some solder. It's just that I'm just not getting heat enough heat there. Whoa! Got to be careful. Don't want to do uh, that whole thing. You know, you swipe across and break a whole bunch of traces. Or take components off. Got to be careful with that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something kind of weird. I'm going to, for the troublesome ones, this one and this one, I'm going to add solder to it and keep it there. And I'm going to try and apply heat from the other side and then lift it off. This is just so pesky. See, this is why I don't normally show these things, because they just get so tiresome. Let's see how we go here. Okay, we're getting there.
We are almost there. I'm glad I can uh, get replacement sockets in case I wreck this one. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah, see, one of these pins is just not, not even coming out. It's actually, I'm lifting the socket off and the pin's staying behind. It's terrible. It's terrible. No. Is it off? Yep, I'm just going to have to, I'm going to have to get a new socket to put on that one, which is a shame. So there is a lesson in that for everyone in terms of uh, not having the right tools for the job because if I had my um machine, I would have been able to get this out fine. But as I say, these sockets are very easily replaceable, so I can do that. And I'm going to have to get these pins out. Ugh. Can't see anything. Okay, what have we got here? Still going, yes, indeed. Okay. So... Let's just get these pins out, the starters. This one was just so pesky. There we go, that one's out. And that one's out. It's not out, this one will be out. Come on, man. And of course, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but this is killing me. This is this, is gonna, this computer is going to send me to an early grade. This is I'll tidy that up. All right. Okay. So now that we've got that off, in the most inelegant of ways, it's time to have a look at the traces and. They look fine. Great, great. That's that's good. That's good. They don't look like they're broken at all. That's 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 just wonderful. Great, 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 great. Okay. Well, saw it here first, folks. Let's just clean these up a little bit. <clears throat> this hole is the most horrible hole I've ever had to deal with. Flip the board over. Just want to get the solder out of these holes because when I do put a new uh, a new uh, holder on there, I've got to be able to shove it through the holes. Whoopsie. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do I hate this hole? Come on. Goodness me. It's going from bad to worse, isn't it?
<sighs> Don't like this one. Smack 2 is not my least favourite. My least favourite is an 840AV that I have here at the moment, but this one's getting close. At least going to get this hole clear. I've just got to check it. I don't even know if I have spare. Uh... Hey, there you go. Okay. So, that hole. Now I've just got this one hole, this last hole. Where is it? There it is. There's the hole. See, some of them are just a holes. A hole, hole, hole. <laughs> oh dear. Geez, I make me laugh. Okay. I'm going to check what I have in the way of spare holders. Um, disappointing that there was no damage underneath it, um, especially given how much time I took getting the friggin' thing off. But This is why people send these things to me instead of doing them to themselves. Um, send me insane instead of going insane themselves. Yay! Right, let's clean them up. Get a bit of uh, the old toothbrush on there. And we'll just have a look at it. That got nothing. There we go. Oh, I've been going for a long time. It's probably pretty late there now. I'm definitely going to need to stop soon because I'm so hungry. I haven't had lunch. And it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. So there is some ugliness around here a little bit. I might just give that a little bit of a scrapey scrape. <laughs> what have I lost now? That's what I, hear, what I can hear everyone say. What have you lost now? Just looking, looking to see if I can observe anything that might look a little bit untoward or unhealthy or unelectricity. Time for me. Good night. Good night. E by zero five. Thank you very much for joining. As I know, I go on, when it goes on this long, you know, people start to drop off. It does happen. Break. Break. Is that a break? Okay. Beep, 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 beep. 
that's it going beep you can't hear you won't be able to hear it because it'll be too far away so i'm gonna i'm gonna do the sound effects for you okay you ready i'll go beep 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 on there no beep folks i think we just found our winner mm. I must go too. It's been great education as always. Uh, great watching you. Uh, watching you. Thank you very much, Christopher. Okay, so, well, we did find a break here, so that's a good thing. Um, what I need to do now is I need to just quickly see if I have spare holders like this that I can use. So I'm just going to have a quick look in my miscellaneous because if I don't have one, I'll fix this break, but I won't be able to test it because I won't be able to stick that RAM chip back on. So let's have a look in miscellaneous. There's one miscellaneous. None there. Uh, here's two miscellaneous. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, what time is it? I might still be able to get some. The electronics place closes in 40 minutes. Oh, it's a, it's a public holiday. You may not even be open today. Nope. There's another misc. Ah, what have we got here? Mm, nothing there. Nope. Last one. What have we got here? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not quite big enough. I oh, can't see it. I'll need to. These ones. Not quite big enough. So, um, I may end up having to, oh, I have to order them. We won't come till tomorrow or the day after unless the local electronics place has them. And I'm going to check that now. I'm going to jump onto their website. What about the trace under it? Oops. Oh, you talk about the one below it? Yeah, I can see how bad that one is as well, but I believe that is okay. Uh, I will test it. With the old beepity beep beep machine. And of course, I'm going to put some solder on that tin it, make it a little bit thicker. But yeah, we're good on that one. It's just this one. That one's okay. Okay, so it's good to find these problems, you know, especially after all that I went through getting that stupid holder off. Stupid! That's a stupid holder. J Car. That's where I buy a lot of my bits from. A company called J Car here in Australia. Those Australians will probably be fairly, fairly familiar with it. It's a bit of a household brand. I see holder. Let's see if anything comes up with that. Or well, socket. It should be, shouldn't it? Should have done socket. Yeah. All of a sudden, I've got pictures of microphone holders. That's not good to me. Let's go. I see. I see socket. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, there's some. 20 pin. Oh, how many pin are we? We're more than 20. Uh, we are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We are 28 pin. That looks like 12. What have we got here? 28 pin. Uh, what's the width of it though? Nim, 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 nim. 0.3 pitch devices. It looks a little bit small to me. It looks like the narrow sort. Uh, specifications. Width 7.62. That's too small. We're going to be more like sort of 12 or something like that. Come on. Don't let me down, old J car. That's a big one. 28 pin. Now that looks like a big one. That looks like a big one. We might be in luck, you know. Uh, specifications. Width 17.7 millimeters. Let's get out the old Bernier calipers here. I saw them before. They're here. Named after Mr. Bernier. I don't know that, but it sounds right. Um, on, okay, so the width there is 
17, a link. 36, there we go. <laughs> they have them. Let's just see if they have them at my store. In stock. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so I will be able to fix this today, but I might going to have to stop the stream for it because I'm not going to leave you guys hanging while I go to my local electronics store. Um, right, so... Let's fix that trace, and then I think I'll probably wrap up the stream. Head over to my electronics. Actually, I should check and see if they're open today, shouldn't I? Public holiday and all. Uh, I'll do that on my phone. What have I done? Right. Uh, what are we looking for? Looking for... And what does it say? It says they're open. Closes soon, 4 p.m. That's the Labor Day hour. So they are open. So that's all good news. Um, I will be able to get this back together today. So I know everyone was really concerned about that. So all good. So yes, they are open. They've, they've, they've actually they've listed their public holiday hours, but they do close in half an hour. So I will have to get moving. So let's just fix up this little trace damage that I found, which was right here. I'm going to make this a really neat one because that's just how I do it. Focus. There we go. Focus. So first thing we're going to do is smother this in a little bit of flux. And just get all of this exposed copper. Not exposed. Uh, I've got my great big humongous massive uh, soldering iron tip which is of course not what I want so I am going to in a moment take it off and put my normal size one on because this one it just you feel, oh, it's, it's yeah it's just too big for what I'm doing yep Yeah, um, I should mention that I, I did mention JCAR for anyone in Australia who is watching. I generally don't buy many of my components there. And that isn't necessarily because they're selling poor quality. I mean, a lot of the stuff there, maybe they're not the brands you would want. But they are fair, they generally stand behind the quality of their stuff. They generally say, look, you know, we've, we've, you know this stuff is good, good stuff. But the main problem is that there just isn't the range. There isn't the choice of things um, that I like. Um, you know, I can't get surface mount components, the ones that I need from them. They don't sell many in the way of tantalum caps and stuff like that. So I can't buy my, um, capacitors from them. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're, um, they're very, very convenient. They're good with connectors and stuff like that. And, and obviously in this instance with me buying a, uh, um, uh, you know, an IC socket, I'll be able to do that. So they're, you know, they're very, very convenient. And of course, there was a, a live stream I did a long time ago. I was working on an SE and uh, it blew a diode. And I was able to just head out to JCAR and get a replacement diode for that on the same day. So that was really, really convenient to get the thing up and running again. Come on. Come on. Come on. You want to come up. I just want to get the solar out of this hole. You can't see this. I'm doing all this stuff off camera. Sorry, guys. There we go. Let's suck out that last bit of solder. There we go. Right. So this is the guy we need to repair. I'm just going to scrape a little bit more around it. Because I would like to ideally have that trace repair going all the way down to the end there. And then I'll run it up there as well. So... I buy my, my components, for anyone who might be interested, I buy my components from uh, RS, uh, RS components for the most part. Um, I like using them because they have free delivery even on no matter what size of your order here in Australia. Uh, so I can just order stuff and uh, 
and they'll deliver it usually next day if they have it in stock. The downside is if they don't have it in stock, they have to get it brought over from Europe. And if that happens, I usually have a five day wait for components, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but still, even if they do have to bring it from Europe, it's still free delivery for me. So that's kind of good. Um, in the instances where I need things in a hurry, I use Element 14. So once again, they have a warehouse here in Australia. So uh, it generally, if I want something, um, they can just deliver it the next day. But with them, it's a minimum purchase. And I don't remember what the amount is, but you have to pay. You have to have an order of a certain size before you get free delivery. Otherwise, they sting you big time on the delivery. The delivery is expensive. So, uh, yeah. Look, I've, 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 I've messed up my beautiful, my beautiful bend. There we go. There we go. That's, that's a Brancus repair. Do, do, do. There you go. Looking good. Let's just clean it up a little bit. Uh, Oz Retrocom, my internet is being problematic. I'll head off now. Thanks for the stream, Bruce. Good luck in the electronics patch. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tone. I will speak to you later. Oh, has the have you tried the Amiga 1200 yet? I recapped an Amiga 1200 for Oz Retrocom. I mean, obviously, I tested it before I sent it back, but I always like it when the te customer tests it as well. All right, let's just check and make sure that we have continuity there after that trace repair. So, beep. Go from, say, there to, how far do we go? There. There we go. Continuity restored. That one's good too. We're looking good. I like it. All right. Well, I think this is where I'll wrap it up, mainly because I just want to get to the shop before it shuts so that I can get this back together tonight and maybe even be able to get it up and running. We'll see. If you see a wonderful photo of a, um, Mac 2, Welcome to Macintosh, or, you know, whatever Mac face on... Uh, on my Brancus Creations um, uh, Facebook page, you'll know that I got it sorted. If you don't see anything, you know I didn't get it sorted. Um, it beeps, but big chunk. It's, it's bothering. It is bothering, Jay, isn't it? I know the one you're talking about. You're talking about that right there. You're talking about that little divot right here. It's giving you pause, isn't it, Jay? All right, for Jay. Doing this one for Jay, okay? Last one, and then I promise, I promise I will go after that, and then everyone can get back to their whatever they were doing. Okie dokie. See, Jay keeps me in check. So if anyone's wondering what that noise is who hasn't been watching my streams lately, a fig tree out there and it's got figs on it that are falling on top of the roof and they go bang bang and it scares the hell out of me sometimes Okay, there's that one. Just need to get it tacked down at one location, then I'm going to bend it. I'm going to bend it like Beckham. Like that. That's solder it onto that little bit that Jay doesn't like. Solder, please. Okay. 
Okay, this is, we're going to call this particular trace repair, we're going to call it J. So, this is the J repair. And we can see that I've got a nice big, uh, what do you call it, bridge there. I'm going to use some flux and neaten these all up. Okay. Okay. Right, MacBoy91 SI, thank you for joining. Um, I will also be finished very, very soon once I just finish this J repair. Ta -da. Loving it. Just loving it. Oh, what's he going to say about that one? Look at it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be sucking into it. I am not going to be peer pressured into doing that repair. I might do it later, though. <clears throat> All right, folks. Well, that is going to be the end of my stream. So I would like to thank everyone who has hung on. We peaked out at around, and around, I think, around about the high 40s. We dropped down to 33. So I think the uh, uh, the people watching have definitely spoken. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah. Once again, thank you all so very much for uh, for watching. I do appreciate uh, uh, having the company while I do this stuff. Um, I am, uh, I probably won't live stream again until next weekend, but, uh, for everyone who has joined, thank you very much for spending the time. Thank you very much for all the, the, uh, kind comments and all that sort of stuff. And I hope to see you at the next one. So bye now.